Assalamualaikum. Assalam. Kami dari RHB, Kak. RHB? Encik cuba perlu cap jari dekat sini saja. Ayah nak keluarkan duit sebab sakit. Tapi dia tak larat. RHB, boleh tolong kami tak? Apa yang saya nampak dalam benda yang tersisih? Yang memiliki kekurangan. Kurang upaya. Dan sering dipinggirkan. Maklumlah, usia mengajar saya bahawa tak semuanya benar-benar sempurna. Dan tak semuanya benar-benar tercela. Hanya kerana ia dipinggirkan. Tak bermakna tujuan dia dah hilang arah. Kalau anda betul-betul renungkan, bisa balik ke sancala. Anda juga boleh melihat keindahan yang tersembunyi di sebalik kelainan. Dan dengan sedikit perhatian dan dedikasi, kita boleh mengembalikan senyuman. Secebis harapan. Saya ni tidaklah tahu semua benda. Tapi, usia mengajar saya bahawa walaupun kita ada ketidaksempurnaan, kita masih mampu memulakan pengembaraan hidup baru. dan memiliki tempat di dunia ini. Mereka
mereka panggil saya Pak Cik Ramli dan inilah cerita saya. Just thinking about the room, at least. I like the room, Daddy. I think Mama will like it too. What do you think she like the most? The TV. Mama loves to watch TV together. I think she like the big windows, so she can see the sun and the trees. I want to buy something pretty for the room, so everyone will be happy. There's no need for that, Elise. You already make us very happy. Baby. Yeah, I love it. But I think it's too expensive. I hope my company covers private rooms. Don't worry, Saya. We still have the additional coverage, remember? Oh, yeah, Daddy think on uh, Medicare. Oh, yeah. It's called Medicare Supreme, Elise.
can our economy reborn from all of this? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Salam Adi Fitri Salam Malaysia Madani Very good morning ladies and gentlemen I'm Ahmad Badri Muhammad Zahir The Chairman of the Board of Directors of RHB Bank RHB Bank and on behalf of the Board I welcome all of you to the 57th Annual General Meeting or We call it AGM of the RHB Bank This is a virtual AGM at live from the broadcast venue at meeting room 3 of the RHB Centre. This year's AGM is convinced in a virtual manner to continue to safeguard the well-being of shareholders, well-being of directors and employees of the company in light of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. It's also our intention to take advantage of the technology advancements where assessed by or to the shareholders could be made more efficient and cost-effective. The convening of this virtual meeting is in compliance with the Section 327 of the Companies Act 2016, which stipulates that the chairman shall be at the main venue of the AGM and also in accordance with the Clause 50 of the Companies Constitution, which allows the AGM to be held at more than one venue using any instantaneous telecommunication devices that allow shareholders to participate in the meeting. This virtual meeting is also convinced in accordance with the Security Commission Malaysia's guidance and frequently asked questions on the conduct of general meeting for listed issuers. Ladies and gentlemen, please be informed that the voting session is now open. Shareholders may start registering their vote electronically until the conclusion of the voting session, which will be announced later. Before we proceed any further, I now call upon the company secretary to confirm whether we have a quorum to proceed with today's meeting. Thank you, Yang Bagia Tan Sri Chairman, Directors, Shareholders of RGB Bank. I am pleased to inform the meeting that uh, based on the registration data given by boardroom share registrars in Emirat, the company's share registrar as at 10 a.m. on 8th of May, a total of 1,348 shareholders and or proxies uh, representing a total of approximately 2.68 billion shares. Uh, that is about 63.03% of the total shareholdings have registered through our remote participation and electronic voting facilities uh, in respect of the attendance of today's AGM. Hence, pursuant to Clause 56 of the company's constitution, Two shareholders present in person or by proxy or by corporate representative shall constitute a quorum for the general meeting. Uh, therefore, I am pleased to confirm that we have a quorum to proceed with today's proceedings, Chairman. Thank you, uh, Encik Azman. And as the company secretary has confirmed that we have the requisite quorum, I therefore declare the meeting duly constituted. Dear shareholders, in light of the increase in the numbers of COVID-19 cases, and to ensure that safety of all attendees of this meeting, we have limited the number of persons present, present at the broadcast venue to essential individuals only. Uh, here at the broadcast venue, and on my right, is Encik Muhammad Rashid Muhammad, the Group Managing Director, or we call it the Group MD of the RHB Banking Group, and next to him is the Ambahagia Tan Sri Ong Leong Huat alias Wong Juhua, Senior Director. 
And on my left is the group company secretary, Inti Azman Shah Ahmad Yaman. Also present at this venue are other directors of the bank, Ms. Ong Aileen, Yang Berbahagia, Datuk Muhammad Nasir Abdul Latif, Puan Sharifatul Laila Said Ali, Mr. Donald Georgia Jaganathan, and Yang Berbahagia, Datuk Ian John Lo. We also have directors who are attending remotely, i.e. Yang Berbahagia, Tan Sri Rebecca Fatima Stamaria, the Senior Independent Non-Executive Director, and Mr. Lim Chen Te. You may see them on the screen of the live webcast. Also present at this broadcast venue are the representative from our share registrar or pool administrator, boardroom share registrar, our scrutinist, Mrs. KPMG Management and Risk Consultants in the Amrahat, KPNG MRC, and our external auditor, Mrs. Price Waterhouse Cooper PLT. Shareholders and proxies are invited to ask questions at any time during this meeting by submitting written question via the messaging window facility as provided by the virtual meeting portal. And on top of that, all questions relating to other administrative matters such as requests for the annual report, door gift and customer service will be addressed by the team via the portal. The board will address questions related mainly to group performance and business and outlook during the question and answer session during this meeting. All questions received prior to this meeting, including those from Pemudala National Berhad and the minority shareholders watch group, and the answers thereto have been uploaded on the LUMI or LUMNI portal. Shareholders are encouraged to review this, the same so that there is no necessity to repeat them again. This will ensure that effectiveness of the meeting and minimize the time taken to answer all questions from shareholders before the shareholders proceed to vote on all resolution table. Ladies and gentlemen, the notice of the 57 AGM dated 11 April 2023 was circulated to you over and above the required statutory notice period in line with the governance best practice. And I'm sure that you all have read the notice and with your permission, I shall take the notice as read. Ladies and gentlemen, pursuant to para 8.29A of the main market listing requirement of Bursa Security Berhad, RHB Bank, being a listed issuer, must ensure that the voting of each resolution set out in the notice for this meeting are conducted by way of electronic pooling or e-pooling. In this regard, I would like to exercise my right as the chairman of the meeting to demand for a pool in accordance with the Clause 60 of the company's constitution in respect of all resolution which will be put to vote at this meeting. The company has appointed boardroom share registrar as the pool administrator to conduct the voting by way of e-pooling and Mrs. KPMG MRC as scrutinous to verify and validate the pool result. With that, let us proceed with the video presentation of the e-pooling process which shall be played for everyone's benefit. Dear shareholders, Thank you for your participation at today's virtual meeting. On this virtual meeting platform, you will be able to view the live broadcast of the meeting proceedings, pose questions to the board of directors, and submit your votes in real time while the meeting is in progress. To view the live broadcast of the meeting, please click this broadcast icon. If you are participating in this meeting via a laptop or desktop, the live broadcast panel can be viewed side by side with a voting panel. To maximize the broadcast panel, please click here. Audio of the live broadcast will continue to play in the background, even during the voting process or when the broadcast panel is being minimized. Do adjust the volume control on your device for optimum audio output. Please click this arrow to return to the main meeting screen. 
You can minimize the broadcast panel by clicking this broadcast icon again. Should you encounter any issues with the broadcast view, please refresh the page by clicking this refresh icon. If you have any questions for the Board of Directors, you may raise them at any time before or during the meeting. To do so, please click on this messaging icon. Type your question within the chat box and click on this arrow to submit your question. A message will appear that your question has been received. To return to the main meeting screen, click on this icon. To view the resolutions for this meeting and submit your votes, please click on this voting icon. Once the voting has opened, the resolutions and voting options will be displayed. To vote, please select one of the available options, for or against. A confirmation message will appear to indicate that your vote has been received. To change your vote, please click on the other option. A confirmation message will appear to indicate that your new voting direction has been received. If you wish to cancel your vote, please click on Cancel. You may change your voting direction at any time before the chairman closes the voting session. Once the chairman announces that the voting session is closed, you will not be able to change your voting direction anymore. You may click on the broadcast icon to return to the live broadcast screen for the announcement of voting results. Should you require any assistance during the virtual meeting, please call Boardroom's Help Desk at 603-7890-4700 or email us at bsr.helpdesk at boardroomlimited.com. Thank you and have a pleasant day. Ladies and gentlemen, Please be informed that the pool voting result and the declaration of resolution will be shown on the screen after the scrutinists have verified the pool result upon closure of this e-voting session. And before I proceed with the agenda of the day, when I call upon the group MD, Encik Mohamad Rashid Mohamad, to give a presentation on the financial performance highlight of the group. Over to you, Encik Rashid. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you so much, uh, yang berbahagia Tan Sri. Uh, before I start, I I believe it's not it's still not too late to wish uh, board directors who are here today with me and also the shareholders Selamat Hari Raya Aidilfitri, Maaf Zahid dan Batin. I will run through the uh, the financial performance of RHB Banking Group asset uh, asset December 2022. Uh, let me just uh, give. Uh, start with giving you the highlights of our performance in 2022. Uh, from uh, PAT perspective, net profit perspective, uh, we achieved a record high net profit of 2.71 billion, uh, up by 3.4 percent year on year for 2022. I mean, look at the ROE, we achieved ROE of 9.7 percent. Uh, we maintain sound fundamental with strong capital and liquidity level. Uh, we'll take you through uh, shortly the detail of it. In 2022, for full year dividend, uh, we announced of uh, 40 cents, uh, 40 cents per share dividend uh, that uh, bring up to the payout ratio to 62.5%. Uh, key agenda for us, of, of course, in maintaining or sustaining our ESG momentum. We mobilized more than 12 billion uh, in sustainable financial services by end of last year. Um, another key thing that uh, we have been alluding to is, of course, improving our customers' experience. And I'm pleased to share with you that as said last year, uh, we achieved an all-time high net promoter score, or we call it in short NPS, of 12 plus, And we ranked it in the Malaysian banking industry. Uh, this is a first uh, for RHB. Uh, we won Silver Award in Banking, Investment and Insurance at the Putra Brand Awards 2022. Uh, pleased to share with you as well from the uh, rating upgrades perspective, we were, we were upgraded by RAM rating. Uh, RAM upgraded us from AA2 to AA1 and Moody's Investors Service also upgraded our baseline credit, credit assessment from uh, BAA2 to BAA1. 
Details of the uh, financial, if I may, I will start with the how we ha we see some improvement in our income. Um, total income for the year uh, increased by 6.7 percent to 8.331 billion. Uh, net fund based income uh, increased by 8.6 percent. Uh, that's brought uh, bring us to 6.38 billion. However, our uh, non-fund based income reduced by 10.6% uh, from 2.16 billion to 1.93 billion. I'll run through the details shortly. Uh, from the operating expenses, uh, we saw an increment of 5.5% from 3.52 to 3.72. Operating profit before allowances increased by 7.6% to 4.59 billion. Allowance, allowance for credit losses on financial assets reduced uh, from 0.74 billion to 0.42 billion as uh, that account for uh, reduction of 42.9%. Our net profit to shareholders, as I mentioned earlier, I think uh, we grew 3.4% from 2.62 to 2.71. Uh, this is this is uh, on the net fund based income. If you look at uh, the growth, I think the growth are mainly supported by OPR heights uh, and robust loan growth, of course. And our name strengthened by four basis point from uh, to two point two four in uh, twenty twenty two. Looking at the net fund based income, uh, fund based income in particular. Uh, Increased from 9.59 billion to 11.35 uh, billion. That's account for 18.3 percent increase. Our uh, fund based expenses, um, unfortunately, also increased, uh, but to the tune of 33.8 percent. I think this is reflection of uh, the funding costs that have been seeing increasing over the last uh, couple of uh, towards the end of last year. Uh, that that increased from 3.72 to 4.97. Uh, net fund based income, however, uh, increased uh, by 8.6% uh, uh, from 5.87 billion to 6.38 billion. As I mentioned, our name improved uh, from 2.2% to 2.24%. Okay, uh, Non-fund based income uh, impacted by lower fee, fee income, insurance underwriting and net trading and investment income. Uh, just like to uh, note that uh, or to point out that uh, however our customers fee related income, uh, non-related, uh, non-interest income grew by 7.7%. This is mainly if you look at the, at the table down there. Okay, 7.7% growth in customer fee-related income. Uh, this is mainly from uh, our insurance, credit card, and also uh, forex income. We saw a decline uh, on fee income by 18.1%. Detail of it, if you can see that mainly coming from brokerage income, I think this is also a reflection of the market uh, volume uh, last year, uh, reduced by 46.7%. Uh, capital market fee income also reduced by 32.3%. We see less um, uh, M&A, less activities, IB activities in the market last year. Uh, asset management uh, also reduced by 22.8%. Uh, commercial banking uh, businesses, however, saw an increase by 2.4%. Uh, looking at the treasury income, uh, we are almost flat uh, from 6.17 uh, million to 6.13 million. Uh, if you look at the uh, the explanation there, our gain on uh, mark to market on securities uh, reduced by 80.5 percent. But however, uh, you can see that uh, this this treasury income is supplemented by the net gain on FX and derivative. So. Uh, uh, the 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 uh, FX and derivative uh, net gain, especially from trading, complemented the investment income uh, uh, capital gain that we saw the previous year. So, in terms of percentage of the total income, the graph down there, you can see that uh, our uh, non fund based income, non fund based income reduced uh, from twenty seven percent to twenty three composition wise. Uh, similarly, of course, we, said, we saw uh, net fund-based income increase from 73 to 77%.
Uh, from the cost perspective, uh, operating expenses uh, expenses grew 5.5%. Uh, this is mainly high, high mainly from higher personnel and establishment costs. I mean, you, can, you can see down there from 2.13 uh, billion to 2.25 billion. That's increased by 5.3%. Um, establishment costs increased by 8.1% to 835 million. Marketing expenses increased by 3.8% to 251 million, and admin and general expenses also increased by 2.7% to 3, 381 million. Uh, we are able to maintain positive jobs. Our cost income ratios uh, improved to 44.7% from 45.2% as for financial year 2021. Uh, on the balance sheet side, uh, if you look at the our loan, our loan grew 6.9% uh, year on year. Uh, this is uh, mainly led by mortgage, our auto finance, SME. And if you see down there the composition, Singapore and Com Cambodia also contributed to the to the uh, to the loan growth of of uh, uh, RHB in 2022. Uh, looking at the segment, uh, group community banking increased by 7.3% to 133.2 billion. Uh, group also banking almost flat, uh, grew only by 0.7%. Group international banking grew by 17.5%. I think this uh, mainly, if you look at the base, is also low. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, Sing Singapore and Cambodia contributed to the growth of the loan. For 2022, we continue our portfolio rebalancing improvement uh, uh, strategy. I mean, you look if you can see from 2020, 2018 to 2022, I think composition wise, I think we reduce our group wholesale banking uh, uh, loan loan composition from 30 to 24 percent. Uh, we increase our Group community banking, which is retail and SMB, from 61 to 63 percent. Uh, deposit. Uh, it was a, a very challenging year last year. Uh, deposit. However, our deposit grew 3.9 percent year on year. Uh, this is attributed mainly uh, from the uh, fixed deposit. We grew 5 percent uh, to 160.7 billion. Our casa. Uh, despite the challenging market environment, I think we grew CASA by 1.3% to 66.4%. You can see that uh, we, are, uh, we grew slightly better than industry. Industry gro growth uh, was at 0.9% uh, in 2022. Uh, saving deposit reduced uh, by 2.1%. And uh, you can see that total deposit, as I mentioned earlier, grew by 3.9%. Our LD ratio uh, is slightly higher uh, to 93.4%, uh, but our LCR is re remain healthy at 162.1%. That's increased by 6.4%. Uh, this is uh, one of the things that we always uh, look at. Uh, this is our KPI as well in terms of uh, managing our CASA composition. Uh, CASA ratio uh, reduced uh, from 30% in 2021 to 29.2% uh, in, in uh, 2022. But this year, I think the, the focus is still uh, wanting to grow CASA to, main, to bring it back to 30% at least from the composition perspective. Uh, credit costs improved uh, to 15 basis point. Uh, this is mainly from lower ECL in 2022. Uh, on loan, uh, and we saw also higher bad debt recovered last year. Our GIL ratio stood at 1.55%, slightly higher than what we closed in 2022 at 1.49%, but our loan loss coverage is healthy at 112.8%. Okay, um, operating performance improved over the years. Uh, we remain resilient in 2022. Uh, this is, um, I mean, I uh, mentioned this earlier, uh, though that is a very challenging market environment last year. Uh, return on equity, uh, you can see that uh, we improved by 0.1%, uh, 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 but just point to note in 2022, there's a one-time Chukai Matmo that was was charged on all, all corporates, I think we included. So uh, cost-income ratio, however, uh, saw a declining trend uh, from 
If you look back at 2018, we were at 49.3. Uh, and we closed at uh, 44.7 in 2022. Then continuously, we're looking at reducing our cost income ratio. That's also part of our KPI. Loan loss coverage, uh, slightly lower than what we closed last year, but remain healthy above 100% at 112.8%. Uh, group capital ratio uh, remain high. Uh, our CET1 capital ratio at 16.9% um, as at December 2022, and our total capital ratio at 19.3%. Uh, last year, I'm sure that by now uh, uh, all the shareholders are aware that we have uh, declared, the board has declared a, a second interim dividend of 25 cent per share with 20, 20 cent cash and 5 cent subject to DRP. Together with the first interim dividend paid, uh, total dividend uh, is at 40 cent. Uh, that represents 62.5% payout for year 2022. If you look at historically, historically, uh, it's it's uh, almost the same as what we declared in 2021, uh, 40 cent. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, payout ratio of uh, very similar of 62.5 percent. Uh, just a bit of update on on our strategy. I've shared it, uh, this uh, with um, uh, shareholders and with public at large as to. Uh, what is our going into position uh, early last year? Uh, we're together with uh, together we progress strategy 2024 was what we have shared. I think they have we have three key key main objective. Uh, we wanted to be everyone's primary bank. Uh, the key is uh, to prioritize our customers' experience. Uh, we are working on it uh, closely and obviously I think we need to drive uh, quality growth uh, for the bank. Uh, with a target uh, uh, ROE uh, to achieve by 2024 at 11.5%, cost income ratio bringing it down to below 44.5%, and net promoter score uh, to remain uh, in the top three category or even better. This is some of the update uh, or progress that we have made uh, since we have launched this early last year. Uh, so we saw some improvement. I mean, this is again uh, based on what I have shared with you earlier. In terms of retail loan, uh, we grew 7.2%. Uh, SME especially, we also grew 7.9%. Mortgage, we grew 10%. Our reflect customers, customers uh, who basically transacted um, online uh, through our corporate portal, Reflex corporate portal, that has increased 12%. Uh, that also helped us in terms of improving our CASA from Reflex, uh, customers who are using Reflex by 10%. Uh, in terms of customers' experience, uh, I've shared this on the NPS core. Uh, we also shared, uh, we also achieved strong digital channel uh, penetration, our online mortgage origin origination uh, of 50% via my home app. Uh, we saw uh, SME online financing balance surpassed uh, 1 billion as at last year. Uh, our enhanced customers' digital experience will refresh our internet banking portal uh, that was that happened in April last, last month, April. And we also have launched from uh, for asset management side, we also have launched our My Invest uh, uh, portal in November last year. Uh, this uh, in terms of driving quality growth, um, I mentioned this earlier in terms of uh, ESG, that's main in our agenda. Uh, we have achieved more than 12 billion in sustainable financial services. Uh, we have uh, increasing our Islamic financing by 9.2%. This is just over uh, a one year period. And 44.6% of our domestic financings are actually in Islamic as compared to 43% last year, uh, the year before. Singapore, Cambodia to remain as our key uh, overseas operation. Uh, we grew 18.7% and 17.9% respectively in those two countries. Achievement for 2022, 9.7% uh, on ROE, cost income ratio of 44.7 and achieved top three net promoter score in 2021. Uh, just to share with the shareholders uh, what we have done on the community engagement initiative. There's various initiatives, uh, some of the notable ones. 
uh, we introduced RHB Money Master Program uh, that is uh, to deliver, uh, delivering financial literacy program. Uh, this is where we go to school and educate the students. Uh, we managed to do 33,000 uh, secondary students today. We also launched in our Excel Academic Excellence Program that has benefited more than 6,000 underprivileged students. Uh, this is mainly from B40 segment uh, across 40 schools that we have identified. And it's, um, uh, in addition to that, we also launched our RHB Excel Star Award. Uh, this is 38 scholarship to underprivileged. Again, I think we look at the B40 families who we can help and we have uh, allocated 4.2 million uh, to support this program. Touch Heart is a yearly program that RHB has done. I mean, some of you may have seen us uh, doing the community project uh, on a yearly basis. Um, so last year, uh, last year, uh, community project, uh, we we managed to collect donation of two million. Uh, that uh, across uh, all countries, not just Malaysia. Uh, that has impacted 120,000 beneficiaries uh, through 200 initiatives. Um, we also uh, look at uh, uh, look at our program, which is RHB Empower Pilot Program. Uh, this is providing 20 young adults with mild autism uh, on the on digital and office skill. Uh, this is well. This this equip them with skill uh, to intern and work within. Uh, within or even outside the group. Uh, continuously, uh, community engagement, uh, we, we do uh, Art with Heart. Uh, last year, Art with Heart was, was a bit uh, different and special whereby we invited, uh, this, uh, we invited and included the differently able artists uh, from the autistic, Down syndrome and visually impaired communities. Uh, we received 120,000 uh, ringgit uh, generated from, <coughs> sorry, from the sales of the artworks uh, was channeled to the two initiatives that support B40 uh, communities through RHB Foundation. Um, on the SME space, uh, our Jombis program, we launched this in fourth quarter last year. This is a pilot progr program and it will continue. Uh, we The aim is to help micro SMEs to upscale uh, and help their business grow so that they're able to sustain and keep uh, resilient during challenging economic and uh, economic conditions. Uh, the program enhance, enhances entrepreneurship skill and improve em emotional well-being as well. I think we look at both sides of, of the equation as well. Uh, we provide some allowances to participants uh, and seed funding uh, is awarded to the top participant. This is key. Uh, you know that uh, this is very important uh, for me to highlight. I think at RHB, I think together with industry, with the regulators, uh, fraud and scams are, are in on the rise, and you know tactics and MO models of already keep changing uh, by employed by the the scammers, and they becoming more sophisticated. RHB, uh, at our end, we have created awareness. Uh, you can, you, I'm sure that you have seen uh, in, on our RHB website, mobile banking uh, constantly. We reminded uh, our customers our, through our electronic direct mail, EDM, through our financial scam talk at universities. Social media, we are everywhere. I think we are in Facebook, Twitter, Foundation, and Instagram. I think that's, that's where uh, we work very closely uh, as, as the... Uh, with the regulators and industry uh, to in, in a way to uh, create more awareness of the fraud and scam uh, in the country. I, from the customer's experience perspective, this is the, the second objective on the TWP24. Uh, I've shared with you a lot on, on this uh, and, and I th this is key. We have been receiving uh, uh, feedback uh, from customers and I told the team to continuously uh, receive the feedback and act on the feedback. Uh, please bear with us. I think we, this is still a work in progress. Uh, we want to put our customers' experience at, at, at the top of our pri priority. So, but however, net promoter score, uh, NPSS has improved. 
And uh, we also monitor uh, this internally, our customer request fulfillment. Uh, that score, about 97%, has been fulfilled. And um, uh, bear with us again. I think com complaints resolve. Uh, we managed to complaints uh, to resolve complaints within uh, within three days. Uh, that's account to ninety seven complaints that we have received. And yes, uh, I think uh, I told the team not to be uh, happy with this. I think we want to be uh, we want to see more uh, happy customers uh, with the customer resolutions uh, at the end of the day. I will not go uh, in details. I think this is just to share with you how serious we are in terms of our uh, next generation customers' experience. We we are uh, focusing on uh, what best that we can do, uh, what are the customer pain points, and how best that we can deliver our our leading service differentiation. That that's that's we are working on that. Okay. Just just uh, before I conclude, I just would like to share uh, with you some of the outlook uh, for 2023. I think we are now in the second quarter uh, of the year. Uh, we at RHB, we projected the GDP to grow uh, by 5% uh, for full year 2023. Uh, how we see this can be achieved is mainly through domestic demand. Uh, we still believe that it remains resilient. Uh, we, we have seen some positive uh, improvement of momentum in the first quarter of this year. Nevertheless, I think risk to the economic uh, growth remain. Uh, I think this is man mainly uh, from the geopolitical inflationary pressures, uh, external development and, and the hawkish, hawkishness of some of the uh, central bank, especially the Fed. I think that, that would, would basically... Uh, uh, that basically will create some risk to the growth of, of our economy. On the banking industry, uh, we believe uh, loans are projected to expand. Uh, that's why I think internally we look at uh, growing between 4 to 5 percent. The uh, OPR, uh, we believe that OPR has been normalized uh, to 3 percent, recently hiked by 25 basis point by Bank Gara that. Uh, brought us to 3%, which is pre-pandemic level. I believe the next, if there's any movement, further movement in the OPR will be depends on the, will be depends on the economic condition and situation. Uh, the, uh, the sector is, uh, I mean, banking sector is expected to remain resilient, especially with the healthy capital and liquidity position that I've shared with you earlier. Uh, in concluding, um, the group uh, has delivered a commendable performance uh, uh, despite the challenging market environment. Uh, we remain prudent in managing our asset quality. At the same time, uh, we are committed uh, in supporting vulnerable uh, borrowers uh, to get back uh, to the recovery path. path. Uh, key is we'll continue to intensify our effort in ESG consideration. Uh, we have established our finance emission baseline uh, in line with the group aspiration to develop a pathway to net zero by 2050. Uh, we advanced and facilitated our customers, particular, particularly the SME, toward sustainable business practices through knowledge sharing, awareness and uh, product and services that we offered. Uh, we broaden our reach in empowering targeted individuals, business through our uh, various programs and by providing basic bank banking products and services all and financial literacy. Some of this, I have mentioned this earlier. Uh, we, fraud is key. I think we are, we are preventing, we try as much as possible to prevent uh, fraud and scam, uh, working with the industry and regulators uh, and, and continuous awareness is key through various platforms uh, to improve effectiveness in fighting financial crime. And the group will stay the course. TWP24 strategy is key execution uh, by focusing on uh, achieving our quality growth, uh, driving service excellence and improve efficiency. With that, I would like to thank you, uh, directors and shareholders, for the faith uh, and trust in us. I think this is from me and on behalf of all the management. 
thank you so much, uh, Tan Sri. I believe if I can uh, just uh, run through the. Uh, we have received some question earlier question from uh, minority uh, shareholders watch group. Uh, if I may, Tan Sri, I will take the question through first. Uh, okay, the, the first question from MSWG, uh, this is uh, lingering around our TWP24. Uh, I believe that I've shared some uh, with, uh, uh, in my earlier presentation. Uh, we, uh, the specific question is, um, what would be the catalyst for RHB to achieve this, this goal, right? Uh, of course, there's uh, concerns uh, mentioned of what we delivered in 2022 of ROE of 9.7% as compared to our uh, for our projected ROE or target ROE of 11.5% in 2024. I mean, just to share with you, I think 2022 is an exceptional because we have Chukai uh, Makmo uh, uh, that we have to pay uh, one off prosperity tax. Uh, so despite that, our net profit is still at 2.71. This is after the Chukai Makmo. Uh, that's representing, representing growth of 3.4%. Excluding the Chukai Makmo, if I take away the Chukai Makmo and normalize our net profit, that, has, that our net profit will be 3.14 billion and uh, ROE will be about 11.2%. Uh, okay, we, uh, we know, I mean, I also have shared uh, some of the uncertainties surrounding the economic uh, recovery, um, but we uh, stand firm that we believe that growth for this year will be 5%. Uh, this is not far from uh, what uh, projected by Bengara from four to five percent. Uh, what's key is actually to continue growth in our net interest income. Uh, this is mainly supported by growth in loans and securities. SME retail overseas business will be the key. Uh, Non-interest income, uh, we believe it's going to be higher as compared to last year. Uh, that's that. Uh, that's mainly coming from uh, treasury and fee income. As as uh, even the last last few months, we have seen market stabilize. So uh, our our strategy going into this year has has put us in the right track. And of course, uh, we are prudent in in terms of managing our overhead costs in totality. Uh, MPS core, I think there's question on MPS core. Uh, there's question specifically uh, on the insurance NPS core. Uh, in 2022, if you look at uh, MPS core, our, our, we saw an improvement actually from 2021. However, our, our peers improved at a much faster rate, resulting a drop in RGB ranking. Okay, what we want to do uh, moving forward, uh, this one with the insurance insurance team, uh, we have enhanced uh, our agent productivity uh, by equipping them with the right tools and product expertise. Uh, we continue or enhancing our customer engagement. Uh, we implemented feedback surveys, enhancing our functionality of our digital channel and improve our brand presence. Okay, what's key as well? I think bullet point three is we are improving from the product in innovation perspective. Uh, this is better benefit and, and feedback from customers on pricing as well. I think we are relooking really and improving our uh, product pr proposition and also pricing. Okay, question two, uh, question two from MSWG. Uh, this is more on our uh, recent uh, venture, joint venture with uh, Boost Holding on establishing the digital banking. Uh, that was the license was granted in April 2022. Okay, per, perhaps maybe I can just give you um, uh, an update as to what has happened. Uh, we are still in the uh, building phase, uh, and in um, I think we have progressing well and on track to meet the target launch date, which is what Bangara has given us up to 24 months. That will be April 2024. Uh, but Continuously, uh, we are focusing on setting up the business operation and product capabilities. And uh, Banagara is engaged um, on the building plan. And uh, this is to ensure that we are in line with the BNM regulation. 
The operational readiness review with BNM will be conducted closely to our target launch date. Uh, in terms of parameters, both parties regarding the nomination and appointment of <coughs> directors and senior management, uh, this has re been reflected uh, in our shareholders agreement. RHB and both are, are each entitled to nominate board rep and key, man key senior management position in the Boost Berhad. The nomination and appointment are also conducted according to RHB and Boost internal corporate governance framework and uh, this is also has to be in line with bank GARA requirements. Um, this, the question on um, extensive knowledge of banking services. Um, okay, um, we foresee that the partnership between RHB and Booth uh, is jointly addressed. Uh, the gap that we've uh, in accessible uh, financial services uh, for the unserved and underserved retail and S micro SME segment. Okay, what we bring to the table is the partnership that we have established years of trust with customers and regulators, along with uh, proven technical expertise, you know, in banking regulation, risk compliance, finance and uh, 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 product management, and also responsible financing to support the setup of digital bank. And from Boost, uh, you, have, you, may, you, may, we may, you may know that they, are, they have also experience in building a fintech business uh, with deep knowledge in digital bank uh, targeted customer segment. Boost is able to utilize their existing e ecosystem uh, in terms of portfolio of product, customer, staff and technology uh, to accelerate the setting up of our digital bank. Uh, segment underserved and unserved. Uh, yeah, I've uh, received this question quite a lot. Um, I think within the retail segment, the digital bank will be targeting at number one, I think lower income, emerging middle class and gig worker segment. In the business sector, the uh, digital bank will primarily target at small and micro SMEs. Digital bank will be will be taking a phase approach in product launches uh, with plan. Uh, product offering unique to market and specifically tailored to all these targeted customers I have mentioned. Uh, again, on the digital bank, uh, on how we can uh, we can uh, leverage on each other. I think we uh, we we will be adopting a data sharing protocol. I think this is uh, set out the basis of the customer data sharing. Uh, you know that we are that is all subjected to. Uh, uh, customer consent and will strictly uh, be set out on the basis of uh, sorry, strictly uh, be set up uh, with the Personal Data Protection Act 202010 PDPA and regulated by FSA Financial Services Act 202013. So of course uh, we will uh, also like to highlight that the strengthen of our partners and customers will also come uh, from Boost existing affiliated eco ecosystem. I think you may have known that uh, Boost has their Boost Life, Boost Biz, and Boost Credit. Credit, and uh, adjacent to that, I think extensive. We are trying to get to the extensive reach uh, to more than twenty million telecommunication subscribers via Cellcom DG. Okay, question three. I think this is more on the I, uh, technology span, IT and technology span. Um, uh, yes, um, in total, if you look at, I think we spent about a billion over the period of uh, 2017 and 2022. I mean, as I alluded uh, in many of my sessions on when I uh, described uh, on the TWP24 journey, uh, we have allocated 50 million. Uh, that is for continued investment in IT and, and digitalization. The 200 million uh, that was asked earlier, I think that represent investment that we put in specifically on customers' digital channel in providing convenience to customers. This is mainly from our for our internet and mobile banking and online account opening and also loan application uh, and insurance. Question four, uh, more on the SME. Uh, we do note that there's a reduction on 1.2% 1 .1, for our SME customers as compared to year before. Uh, that is mainly reduction uh, from our non-borrowing customers as a result of cleaning up exercise on dormant accounts. So what, what has happened as well, I mean, you look, can see this, this from the earlier presentation that I've shared. 
our SMB grew, uh, loan grew, but I think in, in the process of cleaning up some of the dormant account, that's why it, sh it, showed, it showed a reduction. Both our retail SME business continue to have a strong growth. Uh, this is what I've mentioned earlier. Uh, SME and, and uh, retail grew 7.2 and SME and deposit grew 7.9 and 9.7% res respectively. Uh, sustainability matters, that's key. Um, repeated this many times. I think uh, we have entered into our phase two of our group climate action program, G GCAP. A uh, question specifically uh, as to where do we see, uh, where are the, where, what we are, what were the high climate impact uh, and risk sectors included in scope three. So what we have done, scope three uh, is finance emission on the banking. Uh, that covers about 90% of the group total financing and investment portfolio. That's as at 31st December. So we also have uh, uh, categorized or tiered our customers into three tiered, uh, large, uh, large corporates, uh, mid cap, mid corporates and large SMEs and um, small SMEs and micro SMEs. So this is how we're going to approach our customers in understanding and building up the uh, level of emission, uh, carbon em emission by each of these industries. Of course, we have a point, We also have selected certain industries. Um, five industries have been selected to be focused more on that, that contribute, contributed to more than 85% of our total exposure. Um, upon uh, finalization of the, uh, uh, the scope three finance emission, uh, we, uh, a question was, uh, whether R RHB will develop a strategic plan uh, for decarbonization. I think the group will engage the client. I mean, the, the three tier customers that I've mentioned earlier, I think these are the key. Uh, we are focusing more on addressing the customers by, by tiering them. Uh, there's a lot of engagement that's happening. We are also collaborating with some other organization uh, within the industry uh, to work on servicing and helping uh, the customers and um, I just like to share with you at this point of time um, the key is also looking at uh, SME and micro SMEs uh, to help them in terms of preparing them uh, to uh, the ESG commitment and requirement moving forward from the commitment on the sustainable financial product uh, we have we are committed uh, to mobilize 20 billion uh, by 2026 uh, to support our clients through our business activities and lending financing. And I am pleased to share with you, as at December 2022, uh, we have mobilized more than 12 billion in sustainable financial services. Uh, the, I think I've mentioned this uh, in terms of our sustainability financing program. Okay, this is from the product perspective. Uh, in September 2021, uh, we have launched, uh, there's four types of green financing under a uh, sustainability financing program, uh, which are green energy, green building, green products, and green processes. Uh, such a special financing scheme uh, and 10% uh, discount of insurance that, that we are providing for hybrid, plug-in, hybrid, and electric, electric vehicles. Uh, as at December 2022, a total of more than 490 million has been extended to under the uh, SFP since its launch. Uh, with that, uh, Tantri, I think that's the, all the question that came from uh, MSWG. Uh, uh, I, I now uh, would like uh, to pass the floor back to Yang Bagia Tantri. And just, just, uh, just a reminder that all these questions, all these questions and answers are, are on the Lumi platform now, and we will publish this in our corporate website after the AGM. Uh, Tansri, thank you. Uh, thank you, Encik Mohd Rashid. Ladies and gentlemen, I shall now start the question and answer session. We have received questions from the shareholders, including PMB, through various mediums and collected the same and addressed the queries. And I will now once again invite Encik Mohamed Rashid to highlight the question and answers followed by the live question received today. Uh, thanks again, uh, Tuan Sri. Uh, okay, uh, this is in addition to the MSWG question. Uh, we have also received questions from various stakeholders. 
Uh, let me start with a question from PNB. Uh, the first question from PNB, uh, this is again on uh, how they uh, potentially see the uh, how NOII has impacted uh, the performance, our performance uh, in 2022. I mean, like, like I mentioned uh, earlier, I think from the Treasury income perspective, uh, we continue to expect some volatility. Uh, we saw some stability at the beginning uh, of the year, uh, but this this volatility in trading and income, where where I think there's there's lingering headwinds uh, in the financial market stemming from global monetary policy tightening uh, that we have seen. This is what I've shared earlier from the Fed uh, perspective. Um, we are cognizant uh, that potentially uh, this would have impact in the financial market. So I think strategically, uh, what we have done is also uh, looking at rebalancing our portfolio. Uh, I'd like to just share with, with the board, uh, sorry, with the shareholders that uh, what we have uh, done last year, I think that will continue in terms of uh, seeing the opportunities and complementing some of the uh, uh, non-interest income that will not may not come uh, again this year. Uh, so that, that will be from uh, uh, continuously rebalancing our portfolio from the investment book perspective uh, and also looking at the uh, customers, customers' requirement. Um, uh, we have seen customers' requirement from the uh, forex activities and the fact that uh, there's um, volatility in the market that also benefited the bank in providing solution to the customers to hedge their position. Um, so... What, what I can say, three main points uh, why we are still uh, cautiously, I mean, we're not totally optimistic, we are cautiously optimistic in the outlook of 2023. I think from the financial, uh, from the capital market fee income, we actually we are not uh, expecting, we are seeing a better pipeline deals in 2023. Uh, this is all pipeline, pipeline deals that we have seen uh, customers that have come forward. Uh, brokerage income, um, we believe that it, it, it can be improved. I think the, the, the momentum has, is, is getting on, though that uh, we don't see uh, an improvement as to what uh, the level of what we've seen in 2020 and 2021. But we believe that uh, this, uh, this year um, will be at least the same or slightly better than 2022. Uh, our focus continues on wealth management fee income. I know that all banks are focusing on this. Um, we want to position ourselves uh, slightly different. Uh, we are looking at Islamic wealth management in particularly, uh, so to both uh, to uh, to boost the to boost the growth uh, for our non-interest income. Uh, that's question. That bring me to the next question. This is uh, the next question is talk about um, corporate banking GIL. 2022, uh, there was uh, we saw a higher GIL on corporate banking. Uh, that's mainly to, due to a particular borrower uh, from the tourism and hospi hospitality sector, uh, which was impacted by the pandemic. But we'll continue to focus on maintaining credit discipline. Um, what's key this year is is uh, is looking at how. Uh, the strategy that we have put in place in in terms of recovery, but nevertheless, uh, I would I assured you that we will continue to facilitate the vulnerable borrowers and monitor their repayment behavior. So, as a group on a group basis, um, we see some improvement uh, when we closed at one point five five GI last year, but this year uh, we are projecting to close uh, below one uh, around one fifty or below. Uh, GIL as from the group perspective. A question on um, uh, next question is on I this is on the uh, gross uh, return premium insurance that have that I saw a decline uh, from twenty eighteen to twenty twenty two. I Okay, decline in uh, GWP gross return premium um, uh, was actually as a result of us doing a strategic uh, rebalancing of our business portfolio. Uh, you can see that uh, there's there's a GWP from uh, we are reducing the GWP uh, base, uh, focus on non-preferred segment of the business. Um, with that, with that. Uh, 
we also uh, group insurance was able to improve the underwriting surplus after expenses by 69% uh, as compared to 2018. But in 2020, uh, the business uh, was not isolated because 2020, 2021, I think due to COVID-19, uh, we saw a decline in overall GWP. Uh, post-2020, the group, uh, we continued to grow our GWP uh, at around 4% uh, per annum uh, to 738 million in 2022. From 2018 to 2022, RFB Insurance has maintained uh, we have maintained our overall market ranking within the top 12 um, of general insurance company. Okay, in terms of declining ROE, um, we RHB insurance con consistently delivered double digit return. Um, and, and from the return perspective, you can see that we are the top five companies in terms of ROE. Um, Looking at the 2020-2021 uh, lockdown during the movement con uh, control order, you saw we saw a decline in GWP. That that is contributed mainly better claim because there was less movement, uh, so traffic uh, there's practically no traffic, so has resulted in the lower claims, especially the motor, medical, and travel insurance. Less people, yeah, uh, was was traveling as well. In April 2022, um, when we entered into the endemic phase, I think the claim experience began to return to, return to the pre-pandemic level uh, uh, of 2019. Uh, this has contributed to lower profit and consequently lower ROE. Next question on, uh, again on uh, uh, group insurance. Um, uh, I think I have more or less have responded this earlier. Uh, if I... Okay, this this 20, 200 million uh, technology spend, I believe I've shared this earlier. I think this is similar similar question by MSWG. Uh, that's that's how we get the 700 million to. Uh, 500 million is the TWP24 and 200 million specifically on the customer digital channel. Um, question whether what's the progress like in terms of system modernization and automation target TWP of 20 uh, TWP 24 to achieve uh, more than 65 percent I'm pleased to share as at December 2022 uh, we have modernized 56.2 percent and we are on track uh, to achieve uh, we have a target to achieve 60 percent by this year and 65 percent by 2024. And automation, we increased our process automation from 21% to 29% last year. And uh, again, I think on this, we, uh, as at April, I'd just like to share with, with the shareholders, we have achieved 32% process automation. So we should be on track uh, to achieve 40% uh, in 2023 and 50% uh, in 2024. Um, I believe this question has also been answered. I think I went uh, at length on our update on our digital bank. I shall skip this. Um, uh, same goes for, uh, okay, in terms of value proposition, I think I've, I've mentioned this as well. I think the target customers, uh, where is the target customers? How does um, the, the complement, complementation, complement, uh, how Boost complement us in terms of our joint venture? And um, I think the digital bank, the, I mean, of course, um, uh, we are trying to embed and provide a solution to customers' life in an accessible, innovative and convenient eco ecosystem. That's key. That will differentiate uh, us and differentiate, uh, uh, and it will be differentiated by the product, technology and user experience. So it's more digital. I, uh, next question is on the... Um, on the ESG, uh, again, I think this this is uh, uh, what I've mentioned earlier in my presentation. If you look at the, uh, uh, I mean, of course, they make reference, this question, question specifically make reference to page 165 of our integrate, inter, integrated report, uh, but this is a key finding of BE, uh, Board Effectiveness Evaluation. So we'd like to share with you uh, the focus on uh, execution, imp implementing a group sustainability strategy roadmap, uh, I think, is to strengthen this, this, uh, this our sustainability governance uh, with the setting up of board sustainability committee. 
So um, we have set up a board sustainability committee at the board level and at the management level. We also have set up a management committee. Uh, and uh, this board sustain sustainability committee primarily is to assist the board directors in providing oversight and ensuring the integration of sustainability and climate-related uh, climate consideration into the group long-term corporate strategy. Uh, we have put in place, we call it RASI, uh, Responsible, Accountable, Consulted and Informed. Uh, this is to ensure that uh, everybody has their own, uh, their own role to play in ensuring that uh, for the effectiveness. So, so we uh, look at board sustainability committee, board risk committee and board nomination and remuneration committee. And as well as board audit committee as a uh, as guidance in deliberation and decision making process of sustainability and climate uh, related matters. Um, yeah, I this is also I've mentioned uh, earlier. I think we have uh, developed a robust sustainability capability building framework uh, to develop to develop skill set of our people across all level. Uh, we send them for training um, uh, continuously. I think we will. Uh, even even at the board at the senior management level, uh, we were trained. Uh, we will continuously being trained uh, from this uh, sustainability agenda. And for the financial year 2023, we have allocated five million uh, towards learning and development uh, in this area. Question: Okay, on the uh, ERA, uh, you can see that. Okay, the question is whether uh, what are the classification uh, ESG risk assessment ERA. I would like to share with you uh, currently on our high rated rating, this is uh, prelim uh, throughout the, our exercise, it's only a count point 0.1%. Uh, we have a uh, low of 82.3%. And um, again, uh, we have some un un unrated, I think continuously we are rating them. Uh, we have about 4.4%, what's 760 million unrated that will uh, hopefully be completed before end of the year. Uh, again, on the sustainability, uh, what are the plan to shift high and medium risk customer? Okay, this is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, in terms of categorizing them, not just from tiering and from the sector perspective. And this is to estimate or to, uh, to understand what are the emission, carbon emission level of each of these customers. We continuously engage our customers uh, with uh, climate risk and impact to understand better uh, assessment is done internally uh, with the help of uh, some consultant. Then we have assessed the 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 emission level and but engagement with the customers is key. From I think I mentioned earlier in terms of our commitment, we are we are mobilizing about twenty billion uh, sustainable sustainable financial product by twenty twenty six, and as I said last year we have done twelve billion. Uh, on the uh, digital. IT, um, okay, I think what's key, the question is um, uh, on the digital IT and analytics workforce mix of 7.7% uh, from the 6.5%. I think we uh, continuously uh, focus on building our digital IT uh, workforce. Uh, you can see that um, this one is just to share with you. Um, reported scam uh, incident involved involving RHB customers in 2022 has reduced by almost 40%. And there's a couple of things that we have done, I think, internally. I think the type of scam, I think you may have heard, the Macau scam is uh, the most uh, scam that, uh, that has been lingering in the market now. Malware, APK, I think this is, again, um, the Android pocket uh, packet file that was sent. Uh, to you, I think um, this is where customers need to be reminded, and and social media as well, phishing scam. So, but what we have done, I think we are we have implemented a twenty four seven monitoring uh, fraud detection scheme. I think in our system, they monitor if there's an abnormally uh, from the normal transaction that we done. We normally don't. We normally put the the transaction on hold until we reach you, reach the customers. And we also have uh, optimized our fraud rules uh, and threshold uh, and refined um, uh, based on 
known scam. But like I said, this uh, the MO, the models of Parandi continuously evolving. So we are constantly monitoring this uh, from the bank and also from the industry. Uh, awareness, I've shared with you, I think uh, website, Facebook, SMS and targeted uh, vulnerable customers and especially if you can see the last couple of uh, um, awareness program was during the special event, special uh, scenarios, um, uh, festive and especially during Raya, during LHD and payment. I think those are the key that I remember because these are also another potential area that the scammers will come into. Okay, I have done PNB question. Let me take some of the pre question that we have received uh, from retail shareholders. I'll go quick and uh, some of this I've mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, net, uh, uh, okay, from the uh, ROE perspective, I've uh, mentioned that. Uh, that is due to the uh, Chukai Matmo. A loan target, uh, 4 to 5% for 2022, uh, but we have achieved uh, better. Uh, that's mainly contributed to three segments. Uh, I would say uh, retail, uh, retail SME, uh, retail SME and, and commercial, that, that's one segment uh, domestically, and Singapore and Cambodia. Uh, okay, we projected GDP to grow by 5%, um, lower than last year. I don't think we can repeat last year. Last year was an exceptional loan growth. Uh, we are projecting it to be lower between four to five percent. Uh, we we also believe that we can't achieve, we can't repeat the six point nine percent last year. Question on Casa um, and uh, what was what was what is the implication uh, of the recent uh, OPR hike uh, by Bank Gara? Um, we we are we are of the view that. Um, you know, uh, last couple of years, I think there's, uh, there's, uh, there's, there's, we saw movement from CASA to fixed deposit. Uh, there's stiff competition in the fixed deposit space. Um, but um, with this stability of the interest rate environment, uh, we believe that uh, we should be able to look at growing CASA uh, further. And um, NIM was impacted last year uh, by the OPR heights. Uh, typically, uh, for OPR heights last year, uh, we do not see a, a vast improvement in our names. Uh, that's mainly, if you look at the, uh, what I've shared earlier, based on the performance, uh, then uh, interest expand. Interest expand has also been escalated. This is the funding cost that we have to bear during those periods of time. Uh, there's a couple of areas that we are looking at, uh, at uh, uh, focusing on, uh, especially on the CASA acquisition uh, strategy, as well as uh, managing, managing our costs diligently. Uh, question on net prom prom uh, promoter's costs, um, the question on uh, IB retail equities, I think specifically for IB, uh, our net promoter's costs actually increased by 6%. Uh, by plus four, by four, despite a drop in one of ranking. So I look at when, when we look at the net promoter's cost, of course, we look at the ranking uh, among the industry and we also look at how we have improved. So we'll continuously improve. I know uh, it's not an excuse, but we'll continuously incre increase and find uh, ways to improve our how we serve our customer better. That's key. Um, a question on insurance. I think I've, I've shared this earlier uh, in terms of uh, what was the uh, insurance, um, uh, how do we position ourselves uh, moving forward from the customer's experience perspective. To receive question from Mr. Te Kian Lang, uh, will 23 be better than 22? Um, we are cautiously optimistic. Uh, our budget is also reflecting that we, we believe that we can do better in 2023 as compared to 22. But there's a couple of things that we're doing. We're taking a balanced approach uh, in terms of growing and maintaining credit discipline. Uh, we remain prudent uh, in terms of uh, managing our asset quality. And cost is key. I think we will uh, uh, maintain strong, uh, ex strong operating expense discipline. And uh, fundamental, I think uh, we will stay uh, uh, strong, fundamental. We maintain our strong fundamental, especially from the capital and liquidity position. 
Uh, from Lo Mansiong, uh, banking crisis. Uh, okay, of course, this is well talked about on the US e EU. Uh, how is that? How how is that uh, impacted um, uh, this area of uh, this segment of the market and this part of the world? Okay, the group. I think we. Uh, this is continuously. We believe that uh, the uncertainty surrounding the economic recovery uh, from the external development. Um, I think I will. I'm not going to repeat this. I think we we are taking the same approach in terms of balancing approach, prudence, and also managing costs better. Uh, do you see possibility of um, uh, Bandagara further increase the rate? Uh, we expect Bandagara to uh, look at uh, uh, further. I mean, one one right uh, one hike last uh, last uh, the last hike uh, that has been that has been uh, implemented. We believe that if there's any hike, that would be very data dependent. I think the uh, central bank um, would also foresee uh, the uh, would also want to see the progression, the economic progression, and I I also believe that uh, central bank. Um, would do more of preemptive kind of uh, measures. So the twenty-five recent twenty-five basis point hike is more of reflecting of the uh, future growth. Let's see. I mean, the GDP announcement will be on the twelfth. Uh, let's see how we did in the first quarter of this year. Uh, from Kao Li Shi, uh, uh, MOU with China. I mean, anything to any any arrangement that that's positive. Uh, we believe it's a collaboration of these two nations. Would expect. Uh, uh, I expected a result to be a huge spillover uh, for the entire ecosystem, not just the banking. Uh, th this will be uh, benefiting the economic uh, economy uh, as a whole. From Li Chi Chiang, uh, endemic now, the upcoming quarters margin will increase tremendously. Um, again, uh, we have not announced our result yet. I think that will be shared with you by end of the the year. But uh, we are uh, we we stay the cost on delivering our twenty twenty three target uh, and twenty twenty four TWP. Uh, e Yi Chin um, CET target uh, CET ratio uh, stood high at sixteen point nine and nineteen point three res respectively CET one and total capital ratio. Um, uh, question whether uh, whether the group needs to have much CET compared to the major other bank. I think we want to remain uh, from the we don't have any short and medium term target for capital ratio nevertheless our capital ratio is above our internal target that's our internal target and this is above our the bnm minimum uh, re regulatory requirement uh, moving forward um, we know that um, again uh, despite uh, being optimistic uh, i like to repeat the word of uh, cautiously optimistic uh, we want to remain prudent and continue to be the best capitalized bank in Malaysia. Uh, same question, uh, same uh, shareholders, uh, branches in terms of number of branches, you saw a reduction. Actually, group community banking uh, consistently review this. I think not uh, at the board, at the senior management level, we conti continuously reviewing our branch network portfolio. Uh, as part of our overall uh, branch repurposing initiative, initiative to optimize network, we have actually have closed 35 sales center in 2022 and consolidated into the existing branch network. I think that that is for greater efficiency. I think this is also um, looking back on the uh, the uh, during the pandemic period of 2020 and 2021. I think we also have uh, leveraged a lot on digital channel. So we believe that uh, there's, there's, there's less need for us to be, to be having the sales center. And it, actually, it is more, more efficient and effective to have them, to have our sales force within the branch. Uh, so that, that contributed to approximately about 10 million saving, uh, cost saving per annum. Um, for the group investment bank, uh, again, uh, rationalizing branch size, uh, after the merger of uh, with OS OSK in 2013, uh, we started with 61 branches, and to date we have closed about 27 branches. We'll continue to review the performance and re re remain 
uh, the remaining branches. Um, but of course, uh, some of these branches are still profitable and and typically, I think we need to bear in mind there are customers who are still uh, like in certain area, uh, like and believe in going physically to the to the uh, the, uh, the branches uh, of RHB, IBN Bank. So we take that into consideration in in assessing all those uh, repurposing our branch repurposing exercise. A question by Lim Kashe, uh, what is the strategy that will be used to stay competitive? Um, you know, I uh, would like to share with you uh, RHB to RHB Islamic uh, in collaboration with the uh, Ministry of Higher Education. Uh, we have launched a specifically developed multi-purpose smart card uh, and saving account to 1.2 million students for 20 public, uh, 20 public uh, universities across Malaysia. Uh, this allow convenient access management of their fund. Uh, uh, this is also part and parcel of us uh, improving our casa composition. So we have um, uh, we will we have onboarded as at December two hundred and sixty seven uh, five hundred and seventy three st uh, student, and um, we this is as as at uh, first half of this year. This is, will continue. And throughout the year, I think we are targeting to every year we are targeting to onboard about six hundred million, six hundred sorry, six hundred thousand of uh, student. Uh, on the digital sales, um, this I mentioned earlier. So how we have improved on the, our digital channel. Uh, similar question. I mean, same uh, shareholders uh, question about um, no fee directly applied to retail. I think. Uh, Total fee for loan documentation, if you ask me, is actually only about 0.3% of the total income for financial year 2022. As for higher purchase, um, RHB Business Direction is focused towards more of variable financing. So perhaps maybe unlike other competitors, our variable financing method is, is calculated based on reducing balance. So our current portfolio today consists of 93% of variable and since 2022, 99% of our high purchase is a new booking are all under variable rates. Uh, in addition, I think we are enhancing our variable financing. I think many more of our comp competitors have also uh, jumped in into this sector and providing the variable financing. So we are uh, also enhancing the way we look at our variable financing to give flexibility to our customers. A uh, question on any plan to impose more increased fee-based service uh, to give sustainable return to shareholders. I guess this is, uh, uh, I think, uh, I mentioned earlier, key is actually uh, from the non-interest income perspective is looking at the wealth management. Uh, this is, again, the uh, fee base. It's not just charging fees. Eh? I mean, I want to uh, re-emphasize that when I say fee base, is from the transaction fees, uh, basically non-lending, uh, FX conversion, uh, buying of unit trust, uh, buying of uh, certain structured investment. Uh, those are the, the target that we are looking at doing. Uh, we also have a very robust SME business, um, SME business and I think significantly uh, fee in. In 2020, 2022, uh, SME fee increased, uh, grew by 30%. Uh, this is mainly coming from not so much of loan fees. This is coming from uh, uh, transaction banking and also uh, uh, treasury, which is uh, FX conversion. A question from Lee Manho. Any place to uh, revisiting office space and modif modification of work space? Um, uh, okay, despite... Uh, focusing on investment uh, in digital channel, physical location also important to us. Uh, on this aspect, like I mentioned to you, there's still segment of customers who are who still prefer physical present. So we carry out a very proactive maintenance and refurb refurbishment of our branches, especially our premium banking. I mean, some of you may have seen that some of we have um, we have refurbished. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, upgraded our premium banking uh, for better customer experience. As far for the offices, uh, we are also progressively updating and re reconfiguring uh, our existing space uh, with contemporary design. Uh, this is to facilitate pro uh, pro uh, productive and collaborative environment and also uh, offload hybrid working arrangement. Uh, 
to be to become more cost effective in and with sustainability elements. So we have a look at that. A question from still Lim Man Ho, RHB constantly improving. And okay, I think I've uh, mentioned this earlier. I think continuously, that's what we have done. We have actually refurbished more than 55 branches and premier center. Go and look out. Um, I've been and I'm, I'm pretty happy with the progress that we have made so far. Uh, GDP forecast, I think I've shared this earlier. I think this is more of uh, uh, what we want to grow uh, on the retail and SME loan. I have also have shared this earlier. Um, TWP24 update, uh, I believe that I've shared this earlier uh, in great detail in my presentation earlier. Uh, okay, from the risks and challenges perspective, mm, we remain cautious uh, on a global headwind. Um, uh, where we see that potentially risk will be uh, uh, continuously uh, the war between Russia and Ukraine, uh, that is not over yet. Uh, we don't know. I think that that will continuously affecting the prices of com commodity and food globally and supply chains especially, especially. And prolonged period of high inflation. Inflation uh, that is. Uh, with that inflation, you know that the to address inflation, uh, that's uh, continuously or consistently we see the message of hawkishness among the central bank. Uh, I think potential global recession uh, may not be a global recession. Uh, we don't foresee it's happening here, uh, but that could slow down the Malaysian economy as well. Um, dividend policy, uh, payout was 62.5%. Okay, in 2019, uh, we revised, uh, this is a question for E. Chin, sorry. Uh, we revised the group uh, policy, dividend payout uh, from minimum guidance, and this is not our policy, this is just the guidance, uh, uh, from 30% uh, to 30%, minimum 30%, from 20 to 30% previously. Uh, of course, I think there's uh, many factors and consideration before we uh, achieve to the dividend payout that we have done the last couple of years. Uh, so the RP was first applied in 2020. Dividend reinvestment rate has been encouraging, and the RP subscription rate uh, has also been encouraging. But continuously, this being evaluated, and um, this uh, you know that the dividend is has to be uh, approved by the board and also by the uh, uh, regulators before we declare. Um, okay, I think I've said this. Uh, question again by E. Chin uh, on dividend. I think I've mentioned this. Uh, I will not repeat this. Uh, question uh, This is on the dividend reinvestment revenue stamp. Uh, that that uh, there's a request, but under the section 4, uh, subsection 1 of the STEM Act, I think I've, I received the same question last year. The DRP or EDRP is deemed to be an agreement and insure instrument chargeable with the stamp duty. So therefore, it's subjected to stamp duty 10 ringgit, uh, being an agreement uh, for shareholders to elect to participate in the reinvestment option. The stamp duty shall be payable by the shareholders, uh, being the first, uh, being the person whom first sign execute the agreement. Question on dividend yield, whether we will be able to outperform uh, other stocks such as BAT and Maybank. Um, the board believe and the board and the management believe that what's important is balancing the return uh, to shareholders uh, with investment to support the future growth. I think that's key. I think paying dividend is one thing and uh, rewarding the shareholders is key. But future growth of the business is also another key important thing. So this this will be ever will be forever rebalanced and take into consideration before we declare any dividend. So the process I think will go through the the normal process uh, in future. Uh, you know the group intend to pay dividend um, at least thirty percent. I mean we have seen us paying higher. But uh, I mean, uh, at the board, at, at the management, we are targeting at least to pay fifty percent dividend payout. Um, this is when we look back before the pandemic. That was the highest before. Uh, question again. I think this one I've uh, answered. This can company distribute one one. Well, okay, uh, not yet. Uh, bear with us, uh, shareholders. I think we will 
uh, do our level best. I think with your support, uh, with us growing in the right segment of the business, we, I mean, the intention is always there to pay better dividend to shareholders, to reward the shareholders. And also, uh, you also need to uh, allow us uh, to keep some of the capital for us to continue growing uh, our business. Uh, question from Lee Sin Yi. Uh, why does the management distribute dividend script? I think the okay, shareholders are given the option actually to invest, uh, to reinvest in the electable portion of the RP shares. If the RP is not exercised, exercised by the shareholders in full, the remaining balance of the electable portion and non-electable portion will be paid to the shareholders in cash. Uh, Lee Man Ho, BNRC assess, yes, I think uh, we assess this can, uh, candidate nominated to replace any outgoing members of directorship. Uh, this is in accordance to RHB banking group fit and proper policy. Uh, for key responsible person. Uh, the, I think it's a robust uh, uh, assessment done uh, against the benchmark of documented, documented competencies. And uh, we prepared uh, for each role. I think that uh, the self-declaration is key, the academic, professional, qualification, record, and, uh, and there's a specific vetting checks uh, on criminal records, bankruptcy, and regulatory disqualification was also done. Chairman of BNRC um, uh, or any of the two members of BNRC in the absence of chairman uh, conduct an interaction session with the proposed candidates and assess them based on their skill and experience, independent, and uh, be more objective. And also we look at their track, track records, such uh, sound judgment and other relevant uh, perspectives. I think detail of the information is reflected in our Corporate governor Reports 2022. Um, you can look at Practice 5.1, page 44 to 45, and 5.5, uh, page 48 to 50. Uh, whether the board, the board carries an annual performance of board effectiveness evaluation. So this is conducted to, with the support of board uh, BNRC, a board nominating and remuneration committee to assess the performance of individual directors, independent and non-independent, and board committees. This exercise, I think, to, de to design, uh, to detect strengths and weaknesses, and to improve board and individual directors' overall effectiveness in an important uh, supporting competence and reappointment of directors. So we do this uh, every year. And the reports, like, uh, uh, the reports are so reflected in practice 6.1, of our uh, corporate governance report, page uh, 60 to 63. Any clear KPI made to the independent uh, directors? Okay, the independent non-executive directors are required to be impartial uh, uh, and objective, especially in matters rela uh, relating to the management shareholders. I think this is clearly spelled out. So you, you look at the uh, board has, uh, so we need, we need the, the assessment will, re will eventually uh, evaluated and to see uh, whether the board has exemplified strong independent judgment and character in carrying out their mandate, uh, which is reflected in the assessment. Okay, and then you look at the part B of that uh, that assessment is also looking at individual board members' contribution to the board competencies. I think we look at various ang angle. I I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's a long list there uh, from balancing shareholders cultivating innovation to, to, the, uh, to the independence as well. Uh, assessment results are also indicated uh, in the current composition and the majority uh, independent non-executive director and encapsulate strong boardroom culture, I must um, say that, uh, which allow good disclosure and interaction between board members and uh, uh, criticize opinion and sound decision making. Again, performance, you can look at page 60 to 63. Question by Kwek Jin, Jin Ang uh, on resolution 6, payment director's remuneration. Uh, what is the rationale of increasing okay, um, from 2 to 2.4 million? So, okay, the disclosure of remuneration, uh, uh, remuneration paid to the non-executive directors from 2021 to 2022 is disclosed. You can look at page 110 to 11. 
the increase in the amount sought for shareholders' approval is mainly because, number one, I think we have established a new board committee, namely uh, Board Sustainability Committee in 2022. And we have allocated uh, for the appointment of additional members to the RHB Bank Board as well as a board committee. Um, at this juncture, there is no plan and uh, no plans to expand uh, the number of board and uh, committee members as the allocation is purely made to serve as a contingency. And uh, of course, along the line, we need to refresh our outdated electronic devices that part and parcel of the, of the, uh, of the uh, equation. So um, in addition, the amount sought for approval also include the allocation of 10% contingency of the overall remuneration required to mitigate any unforeseen impact beyond the board and company's control. Um, okay, the, whether the, the fair and transparent, I think the, uh, we, we place a remuneration structure that, uh, that's fair and transparent. We underwent uh, this one. I remember sharing this with the shareholders last year. Uh, review facilitated, facilitated, facilitated independently by Willis Tower Watson in 2021. And the revised remuneration structure was duly approved by the shareholders during the last uh, AGM uh, in 2022. We hope that uh, the above uh, provides sufficient clarity in the, uh, why there was an increase in remuneration sought under the Ordinary Resolution 6. Question by Chiu Hon Man. Uh, current status, I have mentioned this. I will not repeat this. Um, same, uh, I have mentioned this. Uh, same in terms of where do we see, um, what is the projection of the next five years. Uh, okay, this one maybe I can take a bit, uh, explain a bit. Uh, we see the collaboration uh, as a long-term investment towards sustainable growth. Uh, we see the digital bank growing alongside uh, our target customers. Uh, this is beyond RHB target customers, the underserved uh, segment in the long run, enabling them to build their credit history, putting customers in a strong financial position in the future. Uh, partnership, um, uh, I must say that we are only the only bank back consortium. And uh, so I mentioned about the benefit of uh, joint venture between banks and uh, fintech companies of both. So, so, so these are the key and uh, five to 10 years, um, we believe that uh, we see growth in this segment of the market, especially the underserved and unserved. Um, what would company do for the bank uh, block? Okay, we uh, consistently, uh, even we have a digital bank present at the bank uh, with the boost as our partners. I think we uh, introduce new and improved digital channel. That, that continues. Our digital channel, our digital technology proposition and improvement uh, strategy would not would not stop that will continue what's important actually is to provide uh, the customers uh, the, the best customers experience I think that one of the key things that we want to achieve by uh, delivering some of the uh, proposition through digital channel um, yes I think we uh, any use of new technology would be thoroughly an analyzed for fit uh, for use and of course security is key as well um, okay I think I've mentioned this uh, in terms of uh, uh, okay uh, stringent process where, but before any of digital channels open to customer access there's a stringent process there's a various tests UAT uh, committees uh, project student committees board committees looking at this before we implement our system because any system goes live. As far as for the blockchain technology, technology is concerned, uh, no plan yet uh, to adopt this at this moment. Um, I, I'm, we are fully aware that blockchain technology is most popular used in digital uh, currencies such as Bitcoin. Uh, it's now also being used in different sectors. Um, but I think uh, we uh, will we reassess this. Uh, but for now, I think we have no plan to adopt this, if you ask me. Uh, elaborate, elaborate on digital on oncoming digital transformation program. I think I've mentioned this uh, in TWP24. 
Chat GPT, we are currently reassessing, uh, we are e assessing uh, at the very initial stage, exploring potential generative AI, uh, especially users case, including Chat GPT. We need to uh, make sure that uh, any of the users, uh, any of the use cases will strict, strictly adhere to the existing rule and regulation, ensuring the privacy and safeguarding our customers. Um, Okay, I think um, this is more or less an explaining as to why uh, we are uh, assessing this. Question for e, uh, from E. Yi Chin, uh, numbers of M&A in Malaysian general insurance. Um, uh, I think uh, my uh, response remains the same. I think our main focus, uh, TWP24, when, built, when we put up this net strategy, was to grow the business organic, organically. Uh, but uh, we are not uh, currently looking for M&A opportunities. But of course, we will evaluate if there's any opportunity arise. Uh, again, from E. Chin, uh, can management qualify the uh, stiff pinching competition, uh, stiff pricing, sorry, stiff pricing competition in the fire and motor insurance? Stiff competition arising from face liberalization that will reduce the gross return premium i think uh, we're all aware that competition uh, will become will need we need to be more competitive in terms of pricing and uh, this will also have impact to our profit uh, margin in at the end of the day uh, management estimated uh, about three to four percent reduction in gwp uh, purely uh, due to business environment change environmental change uh, through this larger general insurers, uh, insurer simply has better knowledge and experience in pricing. Being a mid-size like us uh, actually provide an edge over larger insurer as we are able to be more uh, flexible in uh, maneuvering the environment of uncertainty and target niche profitable segment more efficiently. Mr. Chairman, I, okay, this is a question uh, whether home safeguard insurance, whether uh, RHB insurance will provide this uh, product. Okay, uh, we noted and thank you for the question and interest in the home protection product RHB insurance. Uh, we also understand the home safeguard insurance I, uh, is a fire insurance product offered by friendly, our competit uh, friendly competitor. We, uh, on the other hand, has a distinctive and innovative product that cater for a specific needs uh, for uh, our vulnerable uh, customers, including uh, liberalized fire insurance product that is priced competitive, competitively up to 30% from the tariff premium. House Owner Plus, uh, if you realize, uh, one on the other hand, this is a product of ours curated ex exclusively uh, for RHB customers, uh, bringing uh, unrivaled emergency home services EHS to our customers. This EHS is available for customers in the event of plumbing, dysfunction, electrical, locksmiths, and pest control. So the coverage is quite wide. Um, so this is another uh, area that uh, perhaps maybe uh, you can look at, uh, look comparing with the home safeguard fire insurance. So you see, uh, our Home Owner Plus also coverage has, uh, has been extended to uh, many many disasters uh, that I mentioned that's mentioned here: riot, repair, bursting, domestic help allowances, uh, inconvenience allowances as well. So maybe look up at our uh, Home Owner Plus coverage as well. Okay, um, hmm, grow gift. Uh, this is very popular question that I've received many questions on dog gift. Look at that uh, from many of our shareholders. Uh, uh, bear with me, and I'm 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 the bearer of the bad news. We are not providing any dog gift, uh, including e vouchers. Uh, the approach is is uh, also taken by other conglomerates. Um, uh, let's allow us to pay a better dividend. Uh, like I mentioned to you earlier, uh, then uh, with dividend, then you can uh, buy what you like rather than just getting the gift from us. Okay, and face-to-face uh, -face interaction, uh, integral part, um, thank you for your feedback. I think we, uh, we welcome that. Uh, we'll, I mean, if you ask me, 
uh, this is my second year being the GMD and uh, this, uh, I also have not able to do uh, this AGM uh, physically. But look forward, uh, hopefully things get better, uh, we get more clarity, uh, there's not many new cases uh, anymore. Uh, we will resume back uh, of having uh, physical meeting or maybe we start with hybrids. Uh, so uh, we'll continue uh, virtual for now, but um, I mean uh, next year, hopefully, inshallah, uh, God willing, we will uh, look at perhaps hybrid. Um, thank you for the feedback. Uh, this this is uh, feedback on the boardroom. I think they are all here, uh, so good also. Uh, this is strong feedback. I like this kind of feedback so that we we will uh, try and improve. And I'm sure they're also here. I think they're uh, point taken and we will see how best that we can improve this moving forward. Um, uh, printed annual report. Uh, I think uh, the annual reports will be dispatched uh, to the shareholders on the 3rd May. It already been dispatched to the shareholders. I mean, if you don't get, maybe you can get, uh, you can contact our uh, group communication site uh, to get a copy of the uh, annual report. Um, okay, if all allowed properties are being green building, I, you know that RHB here at Jalan Tun Razak, uh, we are currently uh, not uh, green certified. Uh, we, uh, this is quite an old building. We constructed this building in 1990s, right? And, and early 20s, and four branches properties were purchased in early 90s. Uh, we are 110 old year of bank, so bear that with us. I think. Uh, we, but, but having said that, uh, over the years we have invested uh, in upgrading our facilities, uh, including adopting uh, energy, energy efficiency solutions with the aim of reducing group greenhouse gas emission. So that, that's continue, continuously that we are doing that. And um, this includes uh, upgrading our effi uh, energy efficient chillers, installation of solar panels wherever that we can, building control automation to optimize energy consumption as well as rainwater harvesting, uh, many more that we have done. That, that will continue. This is a part of our effort uh, towards achieving uh, the goal of carbon neutral by 2030. Uh, ESG related framework, um, affected bank profitability. Um, so integrating ESG into our business and decision making framework with both immediate, I think that's key, that um, we see uh, would have, uh, we are managing this, we have uh, some benefit at the end of the day, uh, by, uh, like I shared, by managing uh, our internal operation carbon put, uh, footprint, uh, we may it may cost us now, but I think in the long, long run, I think it will save us. Um, uh, from, from customer's point of view, I believe that, that the, our product proposition, our advice that will help customers and to grow their business with us. I think that's also positively from the bank, bank's point of view. Uh, bonus, I think um, we are continuously rewarding the performance. I think that's key. Uh, if we perform well, we reward our customers, we reward our shareholders, sorry, customers. I think we will, uh, actually customers is being rewarded uh, from better pricing, I hope. Uh, we reward our customers, uh, we reward our uh, shareholders with better dividend and of course uh, staff is key uh, i think we will not be able to uh, deliver such result when the result is good the performance bonus will be better so last year i think um, the bonus is is slightly better than previous year if not similar uh, but uh, we it's very aligned to the market we normally benchmark ourselves with the market before any payout uh, looking at the performance um Productivity, uh, PBT per employee has shown an 11% improvement in 2022 as compared to 2021. Uh, this is since we embarked on the, our digital transformation program. Additionally, we have also automated 21 to 29 and 29% our key processes. Okay, that's the end of the, all the questions that I have, uh, that have rec we received before the, um, before the AGM. Maybe I pass back to Yambur Bagi Tansri. Thank you, Mr. Rashid. And thank you for all the questions. And if there are certain questions which have yet to be answered,
Uh, I missed that. Uh, my my apology. So I need to go uh, go through uh, life questions first. Oh yeah. My, my okay. apologies. Right. So just trying to take a step. <laughs> Let's take it. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. This is life question eh, uh, that that we have received. Uh, bear with me. Uh, 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 apologies again, uh, Tansri and um, uh, directors. Uh, life question. Um, uh, question one. Uh, CET one ratio. I think I've I've shared this. Uh, uh, capital ratio. I think we will remain. We want to be uh, still being the well capitalized bank in Malaysia. So I think I've mentioned this many times. Uh, next question by Mr. Lee uh, Chun Meng. Um, do treat all members company fairly? Uh, don't no no. We are not prioritizing MSWG. We will. We will, uh, like I said, um, uh, the question, uh, the 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 response, uh, the way we do conduct our AGM today is across all the shareholders, not just um, uh, not just for MSWG. MSWG just happened to have uh, sent us the question earlier um, from Mr. Lee Chun Meng. Uh, annual health screening to on board members. Uh, we take note of your concern. Yes, uh, we like to put uh, your mind at ease as, as the company does provide. I think I also have to go, out, to go through annual health screening on a yearly basis. So thank you for that. Thanks for your concern. Uh, from Fong Siu Chui, uh, plans to reduce number of board members at this juncture. Um, Note the involvement of AI has not been uh, recognized by regulation. Uh, this is uh, artificial, artificial intelligence and loss at asset substitute uh, to directors. So uh, it's, it's no. Uh, question uh, from Fong Situ again, can invite each board directors to, to clarify their assigned and ro role. I think the role and responsibility of, uh, of the directors are codified within the RHB bank, um, uh, bank board charter. Um, I've, uh, you can look at, look at our uh, website, um, rhbgroup.com. Uh, each of these functions is being deliberated and described there. A uh, question from Mok Bun Zuan. Uh, has a high interest rate environment already affected the company mortgage businesses? Um, the group, uh, to a certain extent, will benefit from the OPR hikes. Uh, of course, uh, including uh, our mortgage businesses. Uh, current interest rate environment is still accommodative uh, to the borrowers. Uh, mortgage is still our is still one of our key loan growth drivers in 2023. How Chukai Matmo? A question from Hui Chi Kyong. How Chukai Matmo uh, and minimum wage affect the country in 2022? Uh, group profitability was impacted by one of uh, one of prosperity tax uh, Chukai Makmo. Uh, but net profit uh, we still grew we still grow we still grew 2.7 billion. Um, that still represents a growth of 3.4 percent. Um, if you exclude that, uh, the growth is I mean I mentioned this earlier 3.14. The profit is 3.14 billion, uh, and ROE will be uh, above 11 percent. On minimum wage, we don't have employees under this category. Uh, I think we have uh, revisited many years ago. I think we have bring them to uh, the at least the minimum wage level. So nobody is below the minimum wage. Um, a question by uh, Kao Li Shi. Kao Li Shi, sorry. Uh, can company pay higher dividend? Hmm. I've answered this. Uh, yes, intention is always there. We want to pay every year. We want to pay better dividend. Balancing between uh, paying uh, higher dividend and growing the business, uh, and rewarding the shareholders and growing the business. Uh, how much net profit required to achieve to achieve the total dividend for 2022, 20, uh, 2010? Uh, but if the in the future um, we are uh, looking at uh, paying dividend. Uh, at minimum uh, thirty percent, but uh, if if it permits, if we perform better, I think we are looking at paying at least fifty percent dividend payout. A uh, question from Tan Chia Chi: Could you please share the current progress? Okay, I think um, Chan, uh, Tan Chia Chi, I've shared this earlier in great detail. Uh, Liu Chinpin question on why Premier Sales account is not hit the the status 
need to pay 150 for the fee while other bank no such okay premier banking is a service that uh, we provide to customers that require a manager to their wealth management needs uh, for those that do not require such bit we will provide personalized service that there will be no uh, fee on that uh, i think similarly if you ask me uh, i think uh, there are some banks uh, maybe you are right not all bank but there are uh, uh, many banks are also doing the same on the on the wealth management space question from mr lau kung ho uh, how many percentage of loan that are still under repayment assistance as at 31st march 2023 domestic outstanding ra stood at 3% of the total loan and um, as at 31st December, our COVID-related overlay that we have put aside, provision that put aside, account amounted to 411 million. Uh, news came okay, from Chua Song Yun. News reported on uh, new uh, and the Bank Association have recently signed a collaborative uh, agreement resulting in salary upwards uh, by 15 to 18%. Uh, I must say that... Um, uh, this has gone uh, into uh, gone through many deliberation and uh, 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 negotiation, and I'm also very thankful that I think we finally, as an association, not just RHB, as an association, we have agreed. Uh, from RHB perspective, the impact is manageable, and uh, I must say that some of this impact has been accrued over the years, so we are prepared. So I'm not saying that there's no impact at all, but it's, it's ma manageable. Question by T. Te Kian Lang. Uh, will 2023 be better year? Um, yeah, we are committed. Uh, numbers given, KPI given to me and also the rest of the management team and RHB as a whole. I think we are uh, providing a better ROE this year. That's our target. Better ROE, lower cost income ratio and better profit. So yeah, uh, inshallah, I mean, God willing, uh, let's all pray together so that we economy will be will be performing better than than last year. Uh, question by Fong Siu Chui. Uh, I would like to know the director fees. I think I've mentioned this. Uh, if I can just remind you again, I think um, we have uh, deliberated this earlier. I think we have shared this. Uh, what was the reason? I may skip this question. Uh, question by Chua Song Yun. Uh, unrealized loss uh, on uh, health to maturity. Um, actually, we as at as at thirty first December, uh, losses is as a minimal. Uh, when I say minimal, as compared to the, the entire portfolio, uh, our HTM, our amortized cost was approximately. Uh, 200 and uh, 200 million uh, that's account uh, for 0.1 percent only 0.1 percent of the total asset so the 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 losses are minimal uh, lao kung ho what is the proportion of deposit that are not insured uh, we are hmm, we are not in the position uh, to share with the public uh, on on this uh, but you know that there's certain category of uh, Investment account. Uh, it's not insured by PIDM. That uh, I'm sure that, uh, that 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 is being made public. So FD is secured by by insurance. Any uh, certain uh, investment product is not secured under PIDM. Uh, question by Chua Sung Sung Yun. Um, sorry if I pronounce your wrong uh, your name uh, wrongly. Uh, pardon me. Our casa ratio. We are seeing. Um, Okay, this is what we are seeing. We are seeing CASA ratio move from uh, from CASA to fixed deposit. This I alluded to you guys earlier. Uh, but our, however, our CASA growth for last year is still at 1.3% better than industry. But this will continue. We want to grow CASA. And what one of the areas that um, I was hoping that will help us in generating more CASA is through our MOHI program, my SISWA program uh, with the student, uh, university student and the, stud uh, the university's eco ecosystem in totality. Question for Go Teng Ching. Uh, are you able to pay better dividend? I mentioned this. I think I can skip this. Uh, better dividend. Okay. Uh, does dividend investment uh, plan still occur this year? We will reassess. I think this is, um, uh, like I mentioned earlier, 
uh, will reassess and reevaluate this uh, proposition, whether paying cash uh, with the RP, total cash uh, on a yearly basis. There's a lot of the factors that we take into consideration in deciding uh, um, the payout of the, the, the dividend. Question by uh, Yong, Zin, Yong Zin. Would like to bring attention to my very, I'm uh, family, Taman Mida. Okay, this is um, the obvious, okay. Uh, we hope the board, we uh, seriously uh, look at a customer's uh, complaint uh, diligently. Uh, some of those, uh, uh, you may see that I, I took on uh, these um, issues uh, on my, personally, uh, working with my customer's experience team. I, this is, uh, I'll take this seriously. Uh, we'll make sure that we reach you uh, after the AGM. Uh, we'll see uh, how best that we can assist. Uh, we'll take this uh, uh, off the line. Uh, my, my team will get in touch with you shortly. Uh, question from Ravi Chandran. Um, uh, recent experience on relationship manager to meet, okay. Um, again, uh, my apologize. Uh, my apology for this. Uh, we'll contact uh, you, uh, and uh, we will uh, get more information, and we'll conduct the review. Similarly, I think we'll get uh, my team to be in touch with you shortly. What are the steps taken to ensure RM's product managers? Okay, some of the action taken uh, to ensure that there's uh, no mis-selling and providing services within the guidelines. Uh, we conduct continuously conduct refresher course periodically to sustain knowledge and skill. Uh, and these are all in their KPI of RMs. I think they have uh, similar KPIs. Uh, uh, in the event of breaches, uh, RM will be reported and due consequence management process will be taken. I think we, we take this seriously. We have standard uh, document checking and call back by independent sales a quality team for vulnerable, exceptional, selected customers. I think that's what the action has, what action has been taken. Question by Tan Chu Boon. Uh, your point slide using combination of light blue and white, which are also not easy. Okay, my, my apology for that. Uh, I will take note, uh, but just that uh, partly is to reflect our corporate colors. Uh, but we'll take note. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how best that we can improve this. Are the staff? A question from Lee Manho. Are the staff? Um, uh, are the staff of the bank working remotely? We have uh, decided uh, since last year. Uh, we allow eighty twenty. We still allow uh, twenty percent people remotely working uh, from home. Uh, but this is subject to approval of their bosses. I think they have to go through the right process before they get approval. But eighty percent. And I think if you ask me now, in the HQ, 80, 85% or sometimes close to 90% are working uh, physically in the office. Uh, increased dividend payout by Chiu Hon Moon. I think I mentioned this. Uh, more information uh, to the public is needed to promote this. We have shared, shared some progress. Uh, similar question on the AGM presentation. Can you call for a meeting to, to listen from RHB customers directly on how satisfied. Um, uh, you know, our team, uh, our customers experience team uh, uh, are actively uh, going and get feedback uh, from our customers. Um, I, maybe, maybe for now, I, have, I don't see there's a, there's, there's a need for, uh, for uh, to convince a meeting with the customers, but you know that we have various channels that you can continuously provide uh, feedback and, and I think we are making it a lot easier now. Um, I think uh, my team will share uh, with you more as to how uh, we have made the platform easier for you to provide feedback and, and, uh, and complaints. Uh, we, while investment product carries uh, inherent risk, um, downside risk, uh, so we we are we are want to make sure that uh, we are uh, we we put the right people, right process, right control in in uh, to ensure we are responsible at any point of time. Okay. Um, question from Ang Chuan Heng. 
Uh, are the reinvesting program will continue? This I mentioned earlier. I think that's subject to deliberation and discussion. Any special divi dividend for this year? Uh, uh, we have no immediate plan uh, for any special dividend. Question from Tan Siong Chiong. Um, what is your view on recent collapse? I think I've shared this uh, with you uh, earlier. But I think the banking sector in Malaysia, in short, is, is quite resilient. Uh, I mean, this is uh, echoing what uh, central bank governors have also mentioned because we have strong capital and liquidity position uh, position and uh, I think we went through uh, central bank governed us through various uh, scenario, scenario of stress uh, testing uh, so on that basis I think we are we are in a in a better better shape and better position we'll continue to be vigilant however um, uh, in governing our limits and allocation to FI. Our exposure to the uh, banks that uh, have collapsed uh, is, 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 is nil. What is the RHB market share in Islamic banking? Um, Islamic banking, what is the... Okay, we are currently hold about 10% of market share. Uh, this needs to grow. I mean, you can... Uh, I can... Uh, you, sh you saw earlier uh, our uh, uh, asset grew from 2021 to 2022. So we wish to be about 12% uh, by 2026. Uh, question by, by Lau Posim. A uh, month ago, I opened premium account, okay, and uh, to ensure that our deposit, okay. We have noted this and your earlier feedback, I think we will look into any of uh, required uh, refinement. Uh, thank you for your feedback. Uh, we'll make sure that you know, we look into this and uh, implement whatever necessary. Question by Sharifa Farah Hamid Mahmoud. Um, there are so many financial literacy efforts by regulators and banks alike. Should that this be consolidated effort industry-wide? A great uh, part of our ESG KPI is to, to mobilize uh, sustainable financial services to enhance financial inclusion. So... You know, you know, there's a lot of uh, activities that happening at the industry level as well. I mean, uh, uh, for an example, at the ABM, Association Bank of Malaysia, there's a financial industry collective outreach, FINCO, uh, that is targeting youth on financial uh, literacy. This is supported by Bank Negara as well. You know, there's also a national scam campaign on scam and fraud targeting members on the public. This is across, not just bank uh, the uh, telco companies, the e-money uh, providers. Uh, so we are all in the same boat. So we are all working together. As a bank, uh, we, have, we also have our very own financial lit literacy program that I uh, have shared with you earlier. Thank you for the question. Next question. Okay. Uh, from E. Yi Chin. Uh, according to media report, the bank's account, some fraud victim uh, were hacked despite... Uh, never installing any, uh, not receiving, okay? Um, okay, I may not be able to comment on specific case from the media, but as we understood, in some form of compromise of information only known to customers who have contributed to the fraud, not likely to involve insiders. Um, as per earlier, 23% of our scam involved malware APK. Malware, malware AP, uh, is allow fraudsters to access okay, uh, messages without knowledge of the users. I think I, uh, this is it's well uh, documented and well talked about in the market as well. Users normally exposed to the malware uh, through SMS link. Uh, and that's why we remind, uh, remind all customers, you know, uh, we have stopped uh, uh, sending links. Uh, to customers and only download uh, via official app store. Next question mm, from Tan Ting Chiong. Uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, as we continue to explore the opportunities and threats uh, brought upon by digital currencies. However, at this juncture, I must say that we do not see this as a threat. Uh, low posting, uh, refer to customer referral RM apparently 380 will only be credited in referral account. Um, I think this is as per the earlier response. I think we are looking at uh, what, what's needed to serve, how to serve our customers differently. Hyper personalization, uh, dividend reinvestment 
portion too small for minor investors. Uh, okay, I I think this has to be across all the investors. Uh, this is, has to be equally distributed based on the uh, shares of the investors. So any decision on the RP is subjected to the board approval as well. How much exposure uh, bond uh, in bonds versus investment versus uh, your loan? As at 31st December, our securities for, uh, portfolio account for approximately 22% of our total asset. Um, uh, a securities portfolio made up approximately 22% and our total, total loan portfolio is only 17%. Uh, Lee Manho asks why is the share price why is the share price will adjust downward upon dividend? Um, yeah, X dividend impact on the share price. That typically what happened. Uh, Yo Kiwi, in view of past record, appreciate that you give uh, us guidance potential bonus issue. There is no immediate. The question was asked earlier. There's no immediate for bonus issue at this juncture, but we are continue to provide uh, return to shareholders through interim and final dividends. Is it possible from Chu Honman, is it possible to increase amount decision? I said this, like I said, it's being de deliberated, uh, discussed at the board and uh, before it got approved. Um, this morning, Tricom Patronas Dagangan AGM system fail. Oh, okay, I didn't know about that. Uh, it was uh, not recovered until now, this happened. Thank you for your feedback, Mr. Tan. Um, we will continuously stress uh, out uh, st stress uh, test our system registrar service and system to ensure seamless connectivity with the shareholders during AGM. Okay, this base yang yin question to me. Uh, uh, can you share with us what are your uh, th top three uh, challenges uh, to the bank achieving uh, fifteen percent ROE? Okay. Not yet 15%. My ROE target for 2024 is still 11.5%. Yeah, I, I, I love to get there one day, inshallah. Uh, what, what's the key? Um, I guess it's, it's, for me, I think what, um, what wakes me at night is actually uh, not knowing the uncertainties, right? I think that's key. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainties. Uh, it's just the uncertainties is lingering uh, not just within the country, I think especially when it's outside our control. I think that's key. So, so these are the key measures that, um, that, that uh, we need to put in place uh, to expect, uh, to uh, prepare for the uncertainties environment. Um, that's key. Uh, uh, we will uh, try and uh, our level best I mean, to reward shareholders. And um, shareholders, I'm sure that shareholders are also with me uh, one thing to look us growing the business. So these are the uh, important consideration. So I want to make it possible everybody happy. The shareholders, directors, every single person, that even the staff in, in related to RHB uh, will be happier. So that's key. Uh, like like I said, I mean, what, make, uh, what uh, makes me waking, waking at night is actually is the uncertainties. Okay, thank you for that. Pray for me. Lee Manho, why is the share price will adjust? Okay, this one I think I've I've asked I've quite answered this question. How much directors are paid? Uh, directors are not paid to attend AGM. Uh, we treated them. Uh, yeah, they are all here. Uh, yeah, we, we we give them coffee lah. <laughs> coffee uh, with no sugar. Uh, right, E uh, Chin. Uh, while it's important to attract news, uh, especially young customers, uh, what is the typical cost? Uh, you know, we are here to serve all segments of the society. And of course, um, I, I cannot disagree uh, with you more the fact that I think the, the, at the younger age, I think is the key when they first start their banking experience. And that's why I, I wanted to uh, acknowledge and, uh, the team uh, that have gotten this Mohi project that being able to brought in uh, potentially 600 uh, student to be our customers. They may not be able, they may not have the money now, but that in future, I think they are our future customers that will bring more revenue to us. Um, 
Yes, so it costs us a bit, but uh, we will bear that and we'll take that all into consideration. I believe I was told that was the last question. And uh, just to let you know, uh, after this, we're going to publish all the questions, uh, all the questions uh, at our website. Um, well, now I think it's still on the Lumi net, uh, platform. And uh, if there's some question not answered, please uh, reach our corporate com. Then we'll be able to answer those questions. With that, uh, thank you so much. And I pass back the floor to Yang Berbahagia Tansri. Berbahagia Tansri. Right. Thank you, Encik Rashid, for all the spontaneous and live answers. And thank you for all the questions. And if there are certain questions which have yet to be answered or require extensive clarity, we will accordingly respond to the same later. And with that, the question and answer session is now closed. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now proceed with the agenda in hand. The first item on the agenda is to receive the audited financial statement of the company for the financial year ended 31st December 2022 together with the director's and auditor's report thereon. The audited financial statement, together with the director's and auditor's report thereon for the financial year ended 31st December 2022, have accordingly been issued to you together with the notice convening this AGM. I presume that you have had the opportunity to peruse through the respective report. In accordance with Section 340, Subsection 1, Subsection A of the Companies Act 2016, the audited financial statement, together with the director's and auditor's report, are now laid before the meeting for discussion. As the formal approval of the shareholders is not required for this agenda item, the matter is not put forward for voting. I see that there is, I, I wish to put on record that the audited financial statement of the company have been duly received by the shareholders and proxies and we shall proceed to the ordinary resolution one. Pursuant to clause 94 of the company's constitution, one third of the directors shall retire every year and are eligible for re-election. The profile of all retiring director can be found in the annual report 2022. Ordination 1 is the re-election of Bang Yang Berbahagia Tan Sri Ong Liang Huat alias Wong Ju Hua pursuant to, the, pursuant to the clause 94 of the company's constitution. Accordingly, Yang Berbahagia Tan Sri Ong Liang Huat shall retire pursuant to the clause, pursuant to the clause 94 of the company constitution and being eligible, has offered himself for re-election under Ordinary Resolution 1. We will now proceed to Ordinary Resolution 2, which is the re-election of Ms. Ong Aileen, also pursuant to Clause 94 of the company's constitution. Ms. Ong Aileen shall retire pursuant to Clause 94 of the company's constitution and being eligible, has offered herself for re-election under Ordinary Resolution 2. Agenda 2.2, Subsection 3, Ordinary Resolution 3. This is on the re-election of Yang Bahagia Datuk Muhammad Nasir Abdul Latif, also pursuant to Clause 94 of the, of the company's constitution. Yang Bahagia Datuk Muhammad Nasir Abdul Latif shall retire pursuant to Clause 94 of the company's constitution and being eligible has offered himself for re-election under ordinary resolution 3. Now let us go to agenda 2 subsection 4 on ordinary resolution 4 which is on the re-election of Mr. Donald Joshua Jagannathan also pursuant to clause 94 of the company's constitution. Mr. Donald Joshua Jagannathan shall retire pursuant to Clause 94 of the company's constitution and being eligible has again offered himself for re-election under Ordinary Resolution 4. 
Agenda 3 is on the Ordinary Resolution 5. The following item on the agenda is the payment of director's fee and board committee's allowances to the non-executive directors for the period from the 57th AGM to the 58th AGM of the company. The fee structure proposed under this resolution is the same fee structure approved by the shareholders at EGM held last year on 27 April 2022. And in other words, there is no increase to the fee has been proposed this year. Agenda 4 is on the Ordinary Resolution 6. Ordinary Resolution 6 is in relation to the payment of director's remuneration, which is excluding director fee and board committee's allowance, to the non-executive director for the period from 57 AGM to the 58 AGM of the company. Again, the remuneration referred to under this resolution include, included, among others, meeting attendance allowances, farewell port scheme, the director's liability insurance coverage, as well as electronic devices and technology peripheral for use during the meeting. In determining the estimated total amount of remuneration, excluding director fee and board committee allowances, for the non-executive director, the board consider various factors, particularly the numbers of meetings, which is include schedule and unscheduled, for the board and board committee, as well as the numbers of non-executive director involved in this meeting, which form a major part thereof. Agenda 5, Ordinary Resolution 7. We shall now proceed with the next agenda on the with the next item on the agenda of today's meeting, which is Ordinary Resolution 7. This is on the reappointment of Mrs. PricewaterhouseCooper PLT as auditors of the company to hold office until the conclusion of the next 58 AGM of the company at a remuneration to be determined by the directors. The board audit committee BAC at its meeting held on the 26th January 2023 conducted its annual assessment on the external auditors of the company, i.e. Mrs. PricewaterhouseCooper, in accordance with the Bank Negara guideline on external auditors. The assessment covers a wide spectrum of matters such as performance, suitability, independence and objectivity of the external auditors based on the qualifying criteria for the appointments of auditors and term of audit engagement. Having satisfied itself with their performance and fulfillment of criteria as set out in Bank Negara guideline on external auditors, the BSC recommended the reappointment of Mrs. PricewaterhouseCooper as the external auditors of the company for the financial year ending 31 December 2023. The board at its meeting on the 1st January 2023 approved the recommendation for the shareholders' approval to be sought at the 57 AGM of the company on the reappointment of Mrs. Pricewaterhouse Cooper under Ordinary Resolution 7. Ladies and gentlemen, our retiring auditors, PwC, has expressed their willingness to continue office as auditors of the company. The board is also seeking the shareholders' approval to authorize the director to fix the remuneration of the external auditors for the financial year ending 31st December 2023. Agenda 6, Ordinary Resolution 8. Ladies and gentlemen, Ordinary Resolution 8 to, is to renew the general mandate to the directors of the company to issue ordinary shares of the company from time to time pursuant to Section 75 and 76 of the Companies Act 2016. The resolution, if passed, will give power to the directors of the company to issue ordinary shares in the capital of the company, provided that the aggregate number of shares issued pursuant to this resolution does not exceed 10% of the total number of issued share of the company for the time being, 
general mandate without having to convince a general meeting. The general mandate, unless revoked or varied at a general meeting, will expire at the conclusion of the next AGM of the company. The general mandate will enable the directors to take swift action in case, inter alia, a need for corporate exercise or in the event that business opportunity or other circumstances arise which involve the issue of new shares and to avoid delay and unnecessary costs in the convening of general meeting to approve such issue of shares. Agenda 7, Ordinary Resolution 9. We now proceed to the next item on this agenda. That is the allotment and issuance of new ordinary shares in the companies pursuant to the dividend reinvestment plan. The proposed ordinary resolution 9, if passed, will give authority to the director to allot and issue new RHB bank shares pursuant to the dividend reinvestment plan in respect of dividend declared after this AGM to the benefit of the shareholders and such authority shall expire at the conclusion of the next AGM of the company. Ladies and gentlemen, we have dealt with all the issues on the agenda. May I ask the company secretary, Chi Azman, is there, are there any other matters for considering at this meeting? Uh, Rebagia Tansi Chairman, uh, we did not receive any notice of any other business to be transacted, so uh, there's no other additional matters to be discussed. Thank you. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Azman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as all the resolutions have been tabled and there is no other business to be transacted at this meeting, we shall proceed with the conclusion of this voting session. Please cast your vote before the pool is closed in 10 minutes' time. And for the benefit of shareholders, I wish to inform that I have also been appointed to act as a proxy for a number of shareholders and I shall vote in accordance with the instruction given.
dari RHB, Kak. RHB? Encik cuba perlu cap jari dekat sini je. Ayah nak keluarkan duit sebab sakit. Tapi dia tak larat. RHB, boleh tolong kami tak? Apa yang saya nampak dalam benda yang tersisih? Yang memiliki kekurangan. Kurang upaya. Dan sering dipinggirkan. Maklumlah, usia mengajar saya bahawa tak semuanya benar-benar sempurna. Dan tak semuanya benar-benar tercela. Hanya kerana ia dipinggirkan. Tak bermakna tujuan dia dah hilang arah. Kalau anda betul-betul renungkan. Di sebalik kesan calang. Anda juga boleh melihat keindahan yang tersembunyi di sebalik kelainan. Dan dengan sedikit perhatian dan dedikasi, Kita boleh mengembalikan senyuman. Secebis harapan. Saya ni tidaklah tahu semua benda. Tapi, usia mengajar saya bahawa walaupun kita ada ketidaksempurnaan, kita masih mampu memulakan pengembaraan hidup baru. Dan memiliki tempat di dunia ini. Mereka 
panggil saya Pak Cik Ramli dan inilah cerita saya. Just thinking about the room, Elise. I like the room, Daddy. I think Mama will like it too. What do you think she like the most? The TV. Mama loves to watch TV together. I think she like the big windows, so she can see the sun and the trees. I want to buy something pretty for the room, so everyone will be happy. There's no need for that, Elise. You already make us very happy. Hi, Mommy. You like your room? Hi, baby. Yeah, I love it. But I think it's too expensive. I hope my company covers private rooms. Don't worry, Saya. We still have the additional coverage, remember? Oh, yeah. Daddy can work on uh, Medicare. Oh, yeah. It's called Medicare Supreme, Elise.
of small businesses are struggling during these tough times. Can our economy rebound from all of this? Grandma, it's not working. If one way doesn't work, try another way. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall now close the pooling voting, the pool voting. And Mrs. KPMG, MRC, our scrutinists will now verify the pool result and validate their report. An estimated time period of about 15 minutes is reserved for this purpose. Saya nampak dalam benda yang tersisi.
yang memiliki kekurangan. Kurang upaya. Dan sering dipinggirkan. Maklumlah, usia mengajar saya bahwa tak semuanya benar-benar sempurna. Dan tak semuanya benar-benar tercela. Hanya kerana ia dipinggirkan. Tak bermakna tujuan dia dah hilang arah. Kalau anda betul-betul renungkan, bisa balik ke sancala. Anda juga boleh melihat keindahan yang tersembunyi di sebalik kelainan. Dan dengan sedikit perhatian dan dedikasi, kita boleh mengembalikan senyuman. Secebis harapan. Saya ni tidaklah tahu semua benda. Tapi, usia mengajar saya bahawa walaupun kita ada ketidaksempurnaan, kita masih mampu memulakan pengembaraan hidup baru. dan memiliki tempat di dunia ini. Mereka panggil saya Pak Cik Ramli dan inilah cerita saya.
morning. Good morning. Just thinking about the room, Elise. I like the room, Daddy. I think Mommy will like it too. What do you think she like the most? The TV. Mommy loves when we watch TV together. I think she like the big windows, so she can see the sun and the trees. I want to buy something pretty for the room, so everyone will be happy. There's no need for that, Elise. You already make us very happy. Hi, Mommy. Do you like your room? Hi baby. Yeah, I love it. But I think it's too expensive. I hope my company covers private rooms. Don't worry, Saya. We still have the additional coverage, remember? Oh yeah, Daddy think on the Medicare? Oh yeah, it's called Medicare Supreme, Elise.
Ladies and gentlemen, the scrutineers have verified the poor result and validated their report. I will now read the poor result. For ordinary resolution 1, i.e. re-election of Wang Yang Berbahagia Tan Sri Ong Leong Huat alias Wong Ju Hua as the directors of the company, 2,768,222,000 2 and 13 shares, or 99.8487%, have voted in favour of the resolution, and 4,195,586 shares, or 0.1513%, have voted against the resolution, while 434,198,710 shares have obtained from voting. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare Ordinary Resolution 1 carried. For Ordinary Resolution 2, i.e. re-election of Ms. Ong Aileen as Director of the company, 3,273,199,455 shares or 99.8758% have voted in favour of the resolution and 4 million 75,118 75, shares, or 0.1243, have voted, 43% have voted against the resolution, while 29,496 shares have abstained from voting. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare ordinary resolution 2 carried. For ordinary resolution 3, i.e. re-election re of Dato' Muhammad Nasir Abdul Latif as director of the company, 3,225,266,351 shares or 98.4130% have voted in favour of the resolution and 52,011,939 shares or 1.5% 87% or percent have voted against the resolution, while 3,004 shares have abstained from voting. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare Ordinary Resolution 3 carried. For the Ordinary Resolution 4, i.e. re-election of Mr. Donald Joshua Jaganazan as director of the company, 3 billion 274,946,605 shares or 99.9282% have voted in favour of the resolution and 2,354,460 shares or 0.0718% have voted against the resolution while 3,004 shares have abstained from voting. 
Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare ordinary resolution for carried. For ordinary resolution 5, i.e. payment of director's fee and board committee allowances to the non-executive directors for the period from the 57 AGM to the 58 AGM of the company. 3,276,778,424 shares or 99.9880% have voted in favour of the resolution and 394,895 shares or 0.0120% have voted against the resolution, while 121,104 shares have abstained from voting. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare Ordinary Resolution 5 carried. For Ordinary Resolution 6, i.e. payment of director's remuneration, excluding directors' fees and work committee's allowances of an amount of up to 2,400,000 to the non-executive directors for the period from the 57 AGM to the 58 AGM of the company. 3,276,614,406 shares or 99.9830% have voted in favour of the resolution and 556,229 shares or 0.0170% have voted against the resolution, while 121,104 shares have abstained from voting. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare ordinary resolution 6 carried. For Ordinary Resolution 7, reappointment of PwC as auditors of the company, 3,270,675,899 shares, or 99.7975% have voted in favour of the resolution, and 6,637,221 shares, or 0.2025%, have voted against the resolution while 1,304 shares have abstained from the voting. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare Ordinary Resolution 7 carried. For Ordinary Resolution 8, authority for directors to issue and allot shares, a total of 2,975,536,000 362 shares or 90.7920 percent have voted in favour of the resolution, and 301 million seven hundred seventy-three thousand and three hundred and one shares, or 9.2080 percent have voted against the resolution, while 3,004 shares have abstained from the voting. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare ordinary resolution eight carried. For Ordinary Resolution 9, i.e. allotment and issuance of new ordinary shares in the companies pursuing to the dividend reinvestment plan, a total of 3,274,083,000 83,624 shares or 99.9015% have voted in favour of the resolution and 3,227,689 shares or 0.0985% have voted against the resolution, while 1,304 shares have abstained from the voting. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, I declare the Ordinary Resolution 9 carried. Ladies and gentlemen, as there is no other business to be transacted at this AGM, I now declare the meeting closed. I would sincerely like to express my gratitude and thanks to all shareholders for your support and participation at this meeting. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam Adil Fitri. Salam Malaysia Badani. Stay safe.